It's time to turn off the lights, grab some popcorn, and watch some horror movies. This is the Terrible Terror Podcast. Each episode, I delve into the world of horror movies. Why do I do it? Well, I can't really explain it, but I love these horrifying flicks. If you've made your own movie on your phone or made your own special effects MacGyver style, please send it my way. Now, what do you get when you mix no budget, (laughs) barely any acting, and a lot of random shit? Why you get cocaine werewolf. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Terrible Terror Podcast in Jesus Christ. Yeah, this this is the type of movie that this podcast was made for. I know I say it a lot, and I have to say a couple of things to start, okay? One, this movie, like I say in the little intro, this has little to no budget. And this is made by a group that makes movies specifically with that in mind right and so this is brought to us by the sterling entertainment group that we've got here that's bringing they've braid such such great great hits that maybe you have seen uh in video stores across the nation oh uh, and one of them that specifically is um is one of my most hated movies of like all time it's it's one of those movies, again, that you go to, you know, back in the day, you go to the video store, you look at all the horror movies that are on the wall, and you just happen to see this one, and you see that somebody is in it, and you're like, God, I should watch that movie, because it's going to be fun, and it's it's definitely one of those so bad it's good, but it's a bad, bad movie, right? So they brought to you, <laughs> brought to you such movies as and it's funny because when you first start the movie it brings up their like little graphic that they got there for sterling entertainment and then it like flashes a bunch of movies you got studio 666 witches sabbath things revenge with a bite and then towers of blood iron thunder and then it flashed so fast on the screen death factory Death Factory is a movie that needs to be done on this podcast at some point. I still can't believe I have not done this movie on this podcast. I'm going to rectify that at some point. That movie is going to be done, right? And and even in fact, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. It might even be the next movie that I'm going to do. This is like a sneak peek to the mini episode because there's something I, I do have to apologize. I was supposed to do something in the last mini episode. I didn't do it. I need to do it on the next one. And that's the top uh, non-Jurassic Park dinosaur movies. So that list definitely is going in the next mini episode. So, you know, please, it's now on this podcast. And if I don't do it, somebody reprimand me for that shit. But that movie is, it's just, it's so cheap. It's so bad. And it has Ron Jeremy. Like that was a big selling point When he went to the damn video store and had starring Ron Jeremy and spoiler alert, he dies in the first two minutes. You get Steven Seagal with fucking Ron Jeremy in that movie. So it's, and it's, it's just, it's bad. It's bad. That's the movie. Oh God. I don't, I don't want to ruin stuff from the podcast, but this one has to be said that they do this in like an office building and there are like partition walls that they're using for like the partitions of the quote unquote death factory. And the dude like backs into the wall and the wall starts falling down and he grabs the wall and holds it up. It is, it it is just a classic for me of bad fucking like movies, like so bad it's good movies. And it's, it's got thing. It's not as bad as, Something like Demon Child 666, where, god damn, that is a terrible fucking movie. That's not even a so bad it's good movie. That is just a bad, bad movie. At least this has some redeeming qualities. So I, I got to do that movie on this podcast in some way, shape, or form. And most people probably don't even know what that movie is. Hell, they probably don't know what Cocaine Werewolf is either. 
But this was something that just, it caught my attention and I had to see it. And, you know, I sat down and I brought, uh, you know, Paranormal Pat. He came on with me. Well, he watched it with me as well as his wife, my cousin, was also there. And basically, like, I made dinner and we sat down and we all watched this movie together to prepare for this podcast. It's just me doing this podcast, but part of me does wish I would have gotten some, like, type of audio or something from them just to get their feelings on it. But I think we all kind of felt the same in going into the movie. Like, we were excited. We knew that this wasn't going to be a good movie, right, at all. Like, I just automatically went through, this is just a cash-in on all the cocaine bear-related movies that could possibly do. What could we do? Oh, we're going to do Crack Coon and Cocaine Shark and Cocaine Alligator and Cocaine whatever. And, of course, Cocaine Werewolf. I'm pretty sure at some point we're also going to get Cocaine Bats, Right, get cocaine vampire going on in one of these things. That's going to be the sequel to Cocaine Werewolf. And it's so sad, too. And this is another spoiler alert for this movie that they kind of set it up to have a sequel at the end of this goddamn movie. Like, it's just, uh, and so we, we just went into this movie knowing that this is not going to be like when you just see the trailer. Right, And you see the guy in the werewolf costume, and it's literally a mask from Spirit. You know what you're in for, right? It's better than another werewolf mask that shows up in this movie, but it's not by much. Let me just tell you that. And so I I knew already what I was getting into when I was going to be watching a movie called Cocaine Werewolf. It wasn't going to be like this bastion of cinema. And in fact, what is even funnier with this thing is this is done by and i know i'm gonna fuck up the name for these guys completely and please excuse me if i do but these guys are like a legend in the home video market of horror movies and it's the it's the polonia brothers right and if you one of the polonia brothers that originally started the company he since passed away i think he passed away in in like the mid or the late 2000s and like his brother is still running the company and their like specialty in terms of making movies is on to little or almost no budget and it's always direct to video or direct to dvd or it's a home video type of release when they did their movies right so again i know what i'm getting into in this movie and for some of you that maybe don't know like those guys they actually delved in the world of the Amityville Horror. And one of the movies that they did do, you know, was <laughs> Amityville Vampires. <laughs> they also have like a, uh, a The Last Chainsaw Massacre, which is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre ripoff. But yeah, it's these guys have done a lot. They've been around the industry for years. And they're still working, you know, like I said, the, you know, main brother that's still alive, he's still doing these types of movies. And honestly, this is where I have to be like, everything that I'm saying here, it, you've got to take it with a grain of salt. And like, as I do, I'm going to embellish like I always do, even the movies, you know, sometimes the movies aren't as bad as they are, but I always find things to like nitpick or even on good movies, I like to find things to go through. But when it comes to these types of movies, I, I definitely want you guys to to know that a lot of this is just in true fun because these are the type of horror movies that I do really love. I love watching these movies, even when they're really, really terrible. I always find something that's you know has a highlight in it, but I also know, one, I don't make movies, right? And if I made a movie... This would be the movie. This would be the style, and this would be the way that it's done, except for it would be even worse because I've never put one together in my life. At least this crew is getting a shot at doing something, right? They had an idea. A writer had an idea for a script. This small company bought that idea for the script, decided to turn a movie. He may probably only made you know, he made very little, maybe he made a couple thousand dollars on the script. Maybe not even that. Maybe it was just a couple hundred dollars that he made, but this guy sold a script, right? And it doesn't matter what you do. Like, it's not saying that he's going to, or she is going to sell a ton of other scripts, but you know what? They did it. They got their idea out of it. It's cheesy as shit. You know, it's for this movie and, and 
that's the way that things are going to work with this. So again, I know what I'm getting into, right? And I know what to expect. This isn't like when I was a young kid and I would like, again, go to the video store and see these things in the wall and just be like, oh my God, why did I spend my money on this stuff? I'm purposely doing this. I'm purposely going out there and doing it because like one, I understand like what these people are going through and trying to do this. And two, I, again, I I know what to expect. And especially when I saw the trailer, I'm like, I have to see this movie. There's just no way that I can't see this movie, especially with the title of Cocaine Werewolf. And I kind of also need to see Crack Coon as well, just because of the title of that movie. And I'm sure it's going to be on the level of Cocaine Werewolf. And in fact, it might even be less because a lot of times I think people just think of the titles and then they just go with it, right? Like, oh, Crack Coon, a raccoon that's on crack. And he's killing people. That's that's their whole thing. And we're just going to write a script around it. Now, this movie, does it have problems? Yeah, it of course has problems. It's just within the budget, within the script, all that stuff. And we're going to talk about those things. Because there is something about this movie that I wish that it did and wish that it didn't do. Right? And if I was going to go through with it and, like... I know that when you you're doing a movie like this and you're working with a studio like this, you know what to expect into what quality you're going to produce and what quality is going to end up on the cutting room floor. I just feel that's the way that it is that you're making these movies for fun. Hell, again, I would love to write this type of movie. I'd love to have this type of movie made and have it out there. And hell, hell yeah. I'm going to leave my name on this type of movie, right? I'm not going to be one of those guys like James Cameron that wants his name removed from Piranha 2. It's just not the way that it's going to work, right? This is the type of stuff that I would love, I would have loved to have done, right? Just make these movies and keep doing it and doing it. And maybe eventually you get good enough and you end up being like a Damien Leon, right? Where you have these ideas and eventually they hit a nerve with the public and you're able to do more of what you want with a bigger and bigger budget. It's not as big as, you know, big theatrical releases that are there, but the characters get popular enough to that you start doing it. Or you end up with like a Charles Band and you make Ginger Dead Man 5. You know, it's it's those types of things. You start out really small or even you get sucked into a trauma. Like how cool would that be that you write a couple of things and it's these really crappy movies that are out there. And then all of a sudden, you know, the trauma guys are like, hey, you know what? These movies are kind of fun and they hit the way I want it to. And then you can build a career. It's not saying that everybody's going to, but you could build a career like James Gunn, right? There's so many possibilities when it comes to doing these types of movies that I absolutely love. And I love that they were able to do what they wanted. And, you know, yes, is it a cheap cash grabbing in a way? Yeah. Okay. Like, this is the type of movie that you really shouldn't be paying 20 to $30 for, right? Getting the high quality ultra 4K Blu-ray that's there. No, you, you don't. And th- this is something that like back in the 80s, this would be filmed on a video cassette and we'd be passed around people. There, to give you an example of kind of what I'm talking about, a couple of years ago, I want to say like four years ago now, there was this movie that in, I used to do this on Twitch until Twitch took it away with Amazon and everything like that, where they used to do watch parties. And we were looking for just bad horror movies to watch. And there was this one Resident Evil movie, right? It was a fan movie that was done. But it was done by these guys when they were little kids. And then they took their video and they actually professionally edited the video. So it still has that feel of being raw and it's a bunch of kids creating the story. And it's honestly really fun and cool and i was so amazed by that but you had this start right and then it, bam here it is and i you know we have friends of the podcast that have made movies similar to this right the back in time guys they have a couple available on amazon that you can rent that aren't bad they're little short films they're like 20 to 30 minutes they're cool i i really love these things that like get done right and the thing is, is that I can shit on it all the time and just know, again, I've and I've said this so many times on the podcast, but if this is the first time that you've ever listened to the podcast before, and it'd be weird with a 
episode called Cocaine Werewolf that nobody really knows what the movie is, except for those that are out there. If you're listening to this episode, I just want you to know that I'm just having fun with this, right? And I appreciate everything these guys do. And I would rather be more serious with a movie like Imaginary, where I spend, you know, almost four hours talking about and just about everything that failed about that movie because it's a huge budget movie where these guys, yeah, I know we're going to make fun of things. I know I'm going to have issues with things, but no deep down inside, I appreciate everything that these guys do. And because I have never made a movie and it's just like, it's one of those things, even, you know, Pat and I looked at each other and like, why haven't we just made our own movie? Like just shot it on a fucking iPhone, used our, our houses and the forests that are nearby and the parks and stuff like that. And just like this movie and the way they do things, like just do it. Just get it done, you know, and just get it put out there. Put something on YouTube and just be like, okay, do some editing with it and do some transitions and make it a little bit better than it actually could be. You know, it still be cheesy as shit, right? So it's it's one of those things. I really do appreciate the whole team that made this movie. Now, there are things, like I said, that are just out of a whack and there's things with the story that I would have looked at and been like okay maybe on script it looks like it works but I think it ultimately hurts the fun of this movie when you get into it because I think that it starts out really fun and then some things happen to where it's kind of like okay um, maybe it's not the way that it really should go down in in the rest of the movie I will say that the acting for the movie is not bad it's it could be a lot worse. It definitely could be way worse than what it is. Uh and the music I think is pretty good. Uh honestly, it's it's got a whole record label behind it putting a bunch of songs into this movie and the theme song for this movie why it's no, you know, this is no wolf cop or anything like that. It's still like the theme song that you hear at the beginning and it's in the trailer for the movie and you know, it's at it's the ending credits, the actual song song. It's fucking like an it's a goddamn earworm. It's been in my head ever since I saw the fucking trailer and they had it in there. I'm a cocaine werewolf. Yeah. And it'll be stuck in your head once you hear it too. So uh that's that's basically it. I mean, I just we wanted to see this because of what it was, and now we're watching it. And again, I, I don't know a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of like trivia that you can even like think of when it comes with this movie. Uh, I mean, it was you know shot for very little money. You've got the the Paloma, oh sorry, the Polonia brothers that are doing this movie. It's just it's one of those movies. You know, you can go through. It's not rated super high on IMDb. I mean, it's like a, it's a two out of ten. There are people that really love it, that absolutely love it. I don't know if you can really go through and you can look for, you know, there's not really any trivia that's related to this movie. Nothing like that. I will say, though, it has a very good runtime of just about 80 minutes, like an hour and 17 minutes. That's perfect. Perfect for this type of movie. You're going to get everything there. But I will say that I don't know if it utilized the full time that it had to you know it's short but does it feel short that's that's one of the things that you kind of have to ask yourself as you're watching this movie so let's go ahead let's dive into it and uh let's see how long this episode is going to be i hope that it's not going to be four hours i don't think i could do four hours on this movie but we'll see what happens with it so it itself opens up on a full moon and we see the werewolf we see that really cheesy ass mask that they have for it we just get a little bit of a look on it and he's stalking people out in the woods it's a full moon and then we go inside this house where there is a girl in a like in lingerie but not really lingerie it's more like a bikini or it's more like sportswear i i don't know like i guess you could say it's lingerie you know it's very form-fitting you do get a little bit of a uh, camel toe uh, I'm not going to lie. You like look her up and down. I mean, she's attractive for what it is, you know, for this type of movie. And all she's doing is just opening and closing like a shawl around her. And then, of course, 
you know, we get the guy that's talking to her. We find out that he's taking pictures for her OnlyFans page. And it must just be one of those lewd OnlyFans pages because there's absolutely no duty involved with the whole thing. And so he goes out to his car to go get a werewolf mask to be her big bad wolf to her little red riding hood so they can finish off the shoot. But of course, somebody decides to show up and ruin all the fun. <sighs> Nikki, you are on fire. And as your manager of your OnlyFans page, this is going to blow up. Well, my fans want content. I want money. So this week's cosplay, Little Red Riding Hood. And I'm your big bad wolf. Well, let's get to it. You know what would be kinky? I got a wolf's mask out in the Jeep. You stay here. I'll be right back. Well, hurry up! Things a guy's gotta do to get laid. Sean? Sean? Wow, I love your mask. It actually kind of turns me on. Ryan, what big teeth you have. All the better to eat me with. What the fuck is this? Sean? Who's this freak? I thought it was you! Whoever he is, he's interrupting her evening. I'm gonna fuck him up. And that's where we get the very first kill of the movie. And my god, is this one of the greatest things that I have seen in the longest time in terms of one of these types of movies in these bad movies. He pulls his best shorty. Oh, what are you going to do? Going to knock my block off? And then pow, the wolf. And he doesn't actually say that. And if you don't know that reference, go watch the goddamn movie that I'm talking about. I'm not going to tell you what that movie is. You should know what that movie is. One of the greatest cult movies of the 80s. Okay? See it. It's an episode of the goddamn podcast. But (laughs) nonetheless, like... It's just funny because he got the werewolf there. He's He must be a grunge wolf because he's out there in like a red flannel that he's got on as she's like. And I, <laughs> this is one of the things, okay? Like, if, you, if I was ever to make a movie like this, this specific movie, you know, to really get it in and just, I, w- I want to make it as grindhouse as possible. I want to make it ridiculous as possible. I want to make it just like, and, and I want to show everything. You know, there's going to be all sorts of things that you're going to see over the, the course of the movie. I, you know, I don't have the budget to probably do a lot of the makeup, the blood, the extra stuff like they do. This is probably the most thing, like, the most special effects that they use in the entire movie is this fucking scene right here. That's it. It's the opening kill. Because every other kill, I'm going to spoil this, fucking sucks in this movie. <laughs> okay? If there is one thing when you're making this type of movie is that I think you kind of have to have the kills be decent. At least show me something. I'm not saying that they need to be super gory. and I'm not saying that it needs to be trauma levels of over the top. But like... Do something every once in a while. Actually show the werewolf doing some good kills, right? And when you start off with one like this, I'm expecting that. Because as funny as this is and how like ridiculous as it is, it's just never seen again. And that kind of sucks, to be honest with you. And so... Like, there she goes up. So when, you know, she opens, she's still just wearing the lingerie. And like I said, I'd show everything. There's going to be, like... Plenty of nudity. I'm I'm going to do nudity for everybody. I'm going to make sure the ball cleavage gets out there or like one testicle hangs out. The guy goes over there and he's like, hey, you know, who's your big bad wolf? And he opens the towel that reveals that one ball's hanging out of Speedo. You know, that type of thing. I just, I think that you kind of need to go balls to the wall if you're going to do like anything that's like kind of cheaply made. In a way. And I think that you got to get people that maybe are going to be okay with that type of thing to do it, right? So, like, in this opening scene, she's an OnlyFans model. So, why isn't she at least topless? I'm not, again, 
I'm not trying to be like sexist or anything here or being like, oh, we need to show all the girls nudity because there is nudity in this movie. But I think it needs to just be like, again, I think if you're playing to the meta that this is a bad movie and you're even saying these things later on in the movie, you need to play to it. You need to do it. You need to go full on into it. If you're just going to do a movie that's like, say, like a ghost movie or something like that, where there's there's a haunting somewhere and you you don't need to do these types of things. But you're doing a movie about a werewolf that's hooked on cocaine killing people. And there's a shitty horror movie that's being made at the same time within this movie. Maybe show a tit. You know, more than just the one pair of tits that you got there, you can even have her just flash a nipple really fast. Or, like, I would be okay with her, like, removing the shawl but covering it like they would in the OnlyFans photos. You know, the ones that you you subscribed. I mean, I've never been to OnlyFans before, and I could possibly know what these things are and how they get people to subscribe or anything like that. But, you know, she could just be covering her top. She'd be covering her nipples and just showing, like, you know, we get side boob, but you're not getting whole boob. So at least it makes it, like, somewhat alluring and somewhat believable. But no, she just opens her shawl and she's still wearing the same fucking thing that was before, even though she's saying, ooh, are you going to eat me? You know, the double entendre type of thing that he's going to go down on her because he's got those big old fucking teeth that he's got as a werewolf. And, you know, maybe that could give her some pleasure? I, I don't really know. But... Hey, that's the way that the movie rolls. And so, like, then you have the the manager that's complaining that he's got to wear a mask to get some. Like, if it was that easy, I'd put a paper bag over my head all the fucking time and approach anybody that's out there. Except for I'd need something bigger to cover the rest of my body. Probably have to wear, like, a couch cushion or some shit like that. Okay, babe, you ready to go? This is what you get to look like. Look at Couchy Boy. Oh, yeah. But... (laughs) <laughs> that's the type of shit that he he's like, oh, the things I do to get laid. It's a fucking wolf mask. You can fucking deal with it. Like, that's perfectly fine if she's willing to do this shit with you. Then just let her do this shit with you. Don't worry about you having to wear something like that. At least you're not wearing like a Pikachu outfit or a SpongeBob SquarePants outfit where you've got to have your dick poking out the bottom, right? This is not another Munsters parody. Where you're going to have to get all like painted all green and shit to look like Herman Munster and put on fucking platform shoes and still have it and you're like dong hang out and one thing. And that's something that I've never seen before as well. Uh, But (laughs) all you got to do is put on a fucking wolf mask. That's it. And then you're just like, well, who the fuck is this guy? Well, I'm not just have to go over there and fuck him up. And so like (laughs) there's a reaction shot for the werewolf. The werewolf looks at her and it's like, is this fucker for real? And then looks over and said, fine, I guess got to do what I got to do. And then it like does this cutaway to where like there's definitely like a mannequin that's there to where he knocks his head off his shoulders with one swipe. And I have not laughed so loud because it's like he goes over and he slowly puts a hand up against the guy's head and then it's a quick jump cut to him just knocking the head over and there's just like a red hole on top of a mannequin. It's it's absolutely perfect. And this is what makes you think that this is going to be a so bad it's good movie. That it's just going to be right there. And you're just going to have fun with this movie. And unfortunately, it, it does have issues that stop it from being that. It tries, but it never reaches the heights of what we have right here. Right? I, I would say in the first 20 minutes of the film. When we're focusing on this werewolf, who is not our cocaine werewolf, right? Our cocaine werewolf is going to come on later on in the film. So, dude is dead. And then, of course, he turns on the girl as well. She runs away. She goes over to the car. And when she's trying to get into the car, that's when she's like realizes that the door is locked. And so she can't get in. The werewolf comes behind, drags her down. And then there's blood that gets thrown onto the window but it's like it looks like cgi blood it doesn't just look like cheap ass cornstarch which i'd rather have shown up against the screen instead it's just like it's cheesy but it's funny cheesy at the same time so that's our big opener of the movie to where we get the like the title credits where we get images of the werewolf and like people that supposedly he's killed 
but we never see any of these people in this movie whatsoever. So then we go over to like a mechanic shop that's, I guess, a garage that has a bunch of random shit in it. And we see that this guy, he's like pacing around inside. He's got this like suitcase. I'd say briefcase, but that's a suitcase. That's like an old school 80s style suitcase that he's got there. And of course, inside he's got tons of bags of fucking cocaine and a gun that keeps switching positions <laughs> inside the case. They do one shot, and the gun's towards the top of the case. They do another shot where it's like a closer-up shot, and it's below, like, towards the empty spot where there's no cocaine. And then they cut over to another part, and it's back up on top again. And then they cut back, and then it... <laughs> back down the bottom and he's waiting for somebody to come in who happens to be a guy that looks like he's trying to cosplay you know kevin nash and if you don't know who kevin nash is you've never seen razor ramon um that's a terrible razor ramon but that should get you the gifs of whatever it is so he's there waiting for the guy who just finally shows up and he's making the transaction with the dude I wouldn't be dipping into that if I were you. Uh, no, the boss wouldn't like knowing you tapped into his snow. No, Louie, I, I was just making sure it was all there. your habit anymore all right come on I, I did my part where's the cash i need to get it fixed bad man i won't be making eyes at you all night <laughs> funny guy what's this read it okay so this guy he's just jones and he has a coke habit and he's just like looking at me, oh man, I gotta get me some. And he grabs it and he like kind of like holds it to his face. No, 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 I can't do it. I have to get the money. And he's selling his Coke to get money for more Coke? Wait, what? Why wouldn't he just keep a bag for himself regardless? Maybe he's just delivering the Coke. Maybe that's what it is. Like he's just done this drug deal and he's been doing the running for it. And for some reason, he's going to leave his gun inside of like the suitcase that he's going to give the guy so that he has a gun. And it's funny because when the guy comes in and he closes it, I'm like, there will not be anything missing in there. I want to make sure all that cocaine's there for the boss. If it's not there for the boss, we're going to have problems. And you don't want problems. No, no, man. I, I just want more cocaine. Well, why didn't you just keep some of it for yourself? I mean, you got all of this for us. You could have at least kept like a bag for yourself. I understand it's all here, right? I want it all here, and I'm telling you that I'm going to kill you if it's not all here. But you could have ordered from the guy. Like, if I wanted 30 bags, let's say, there's... There's supposed to be 30 bags inside here, okay? Yeah, yeah. okay, 30, 30 bags, because you're going to give me the money for the, for the more little Coke, right? You're going to give me money for more Coke? I can, can get, more, get more Coke with the, with the thing, because I can put 30 bags in here, and they're there, and I'm, I'm, I'm just jonesing, man. i got to get the money, so I go buy more Coke. Okay, okay, settle, settle down. I'm, I'm trying to explain something here. I know that you're jonesing for a fix, but I just want to make this clear. You could have asked the guy for 31 bags kept one bag for yourself and still give me the 30 and kept the money. I mean, you're a criminal, right? You can do criminal things like this. I mean, I know I'm not anything to trust right here because, I mean, you're trusting me too much by giving me the gun. I I'm just going to lay this all out for you here. But but you said th 30 bags of Coke, and that's 30 bags of Coke in there, but, but you have a gun. Like, isn't that for your old protection? Wouldn't you be threatening with me? Like, it would make more sense if you just went over there and you're like, you had the gun on you. And then when I gave you the money for the Coke, you turned on me with the gun and said, now give me all the Coke too. 
I, I wasn't thinking about that. I was only thinking about my next score and that I needed money for the next score and you wouldn't give me these things and I have the stuff and there's 30 bags of Coke Sundry said, just give me the fucking money so I'm going to score my own Coke because I need to score my own Coke. I'll buy it from you. Like, give me the money and I'll give you some of it back and you give me one of those baggies because that's what you're going to do with it anyway, right? You're just going to sell this here and you're going to get a fist off in there. Okay, slow down. I, I still don't think you understand what I'm saying. So why don't you just read this here note? And so like, he gives him the note, and out loud, I said, what is it going to say? You're dead on it? <laughs> and he opens the note, and it says, in all caps, BANG! <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> and then he shoots him in the head. In a terrible effect, because it's like just like a dot of blood where like the bullet hole is. It's just darker in one spot than it is. But then when he falls on the ground, you're looking on the ground. It's like dried up quite a bit. But I just, I was just rolling laughing. And that's one of the times where I looked over Patrick and I said, why? Why haven't we written our own horror movie? Why haven't we done it? Like, I could, I sniffed this shit out right away. And that's there. And so... Razor Ramon at home <laughs> goes and kills the guy. And it's hilarious. I'm, I never play like music from movies that are in like in there unless there's something that I have to point out. Because I even said this, there's so much of we got this at home in this movie, but it's most apparent here where the song starts playing in the background because he like he packs up everything and he's you know you should have uh, known that this was going to happen to you you know that type of thing and he walks away with the money and then outside we see that well he walks away with the cocaine i guess and the money he possibly has on him or doesn't and we see the werewolf outside the werewolf from earlier walk by the window and then we go into werewolf vision as werewolf vision is walking outside and then we get weird close ups too at the same time like, do we really need to see the werewolf's face? Like, we saw it in the beginning of the movie, and that's fine. But when we're in werewolf vision, do we really need to go and look at him for a second as he snarls? Like, just keep it in werewolf vision. Don't keep cutting back and forth to the face of the werewolf, to then the vision of the werewolf, and then to the face of the werewolf, and then back to the vision of the werewolf. And so, anyway, the werewolf is now stalking the guy with all the cocaine. And once again... This isn't the cocaine werewolf. This is just a werewolf that wants to do werewolf things and fuck people up in werewolf ways, right? At least he could have been like the OnlyFans werewolf, okay? He could have got the girl in the beginning and, you know, oh, you're making OnlyFans content? Well, I won't kill you if you let me fuck you for a little bit. And then maybe I'll kill you. But that's not very nice of you. Well... I am the only fans werewolf, and according to the lore in this movie that we'll talk about a little bit more later on in the movie, um, OnlyFans is what's going to turn me into werewolf, so, and I have a craving for OnlyFans models, and you're one, and I'm now a werewolf, so put two and two together, <laughs> OnlyFans werewolf. You want to check out my page? There's a lot of uh, hairy ball cleavage on there. Does pretty well. You'd, you'd be surprised how Werewolf Only Fans really brings in the money that I don't really see. That's I'm going to have to talk to my manager. He's putting me in these weird situations. I mean, how's your manager been? Um, uh, he's, well, he's dead for one. And uh, he, he wears a mask sometimes. But... Uh, if that's what makes me money, and I, I'm in the top 2%, does that count? I've been doing this OnlyFans werewolf shit for like five years, and I'm only in the top 20%. God fucking damn it. More collabs. I'm going to let you go. Plus, you know, you're kind of cute, and I'm going to follow you. Probably spend my OnlyFans money on you. Continue to be a werewolf. You know how these things work. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go be naked with somebody else. Bye. <laughs> but anyway, I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, so 
<laughs> this is what happens. These skits go on for way too long when I do these skits. And that's why it ends up being four hours. So anyway, so he's stalking the guy inside the, the little like garage area, which looks like a store at the same time. Cause it's got a bunch of random shit. It looks like it's a, you know, it's my abuela's fucking house back in the day where there's all these like cool whip containers that have a bunch of shit in it. And you've got Folgers coffee cans that don't have coffee, but they've got all sorts of like nuts and bolts and all that other type of shit. And all these other random, I think I see fabuloso somewhere on the walls. Uh, but so while he's roaming around and he's looking for whatever stocking him back there, that's where we have this music in the background that sounds like we have Marilyn Manson at home. All right, punk. It's just you and me. Mom, I want to go to the Marilyn Manson concert. No, you can't go. We've got Marilyn Manson at home. But he's not very good. I mean, it's like, okay, but the stage. No, I told you I've been working really hard on doing this music for you. Okay, we got Marilyn Manson at home. You're going to sit here and you're going to listen to Marilyn Manson at home. Okay, Mom, I'll listen to your Marilyn Manson at home. That's right, Carl. But. Anyway, so, like, and then the werewolf attacks, you know, while Marilyn Manson at home is playing in the background. And so, like, it's weird because it's just him, like, you get images of the wolf on top and, like, kind of scratching. And it's just, like, the camera going really in and fast and out to his face. And then there's, like, there's bites and like CGI blood that's being thrown on the screen. And I don't even know if it's CGI blood. It might just be animated blood or stock blood that's being put like, just like a gif of like dark water splashing, but it just colored it red because it was easier to get stock footage than it was to actually just get any type of blood that they could even spray on the camera or they only had one ketchup bottle of blood available and that's what they want to use later on in the movie so they can't use it right now so again when i say this is low to no budget it shows on the screen like when i talked about in, in like the aliens review that i did that's available on youtube plug 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 but like someone says i do all the fucking time but i like said in that movie what they spent for the movie it's on the fucking screen you can see it it is there it is fantastic it is great this is the same way Everything that they spent or little that they didn't spend in this movie, it's all on the goddamn screen. From the baggies of detergent, I'm sure that's fucking Tide. But I think Tide's probably too fucking expensive for this movie. So they probably went with like the dollar store knockoff, El Tido, you know, something like that. <laughs> that's there. Or if Fabuloso makes a detergent, I'm sure that that's there as well. And... <laughs> Like, just everything that they do, you can tell that the budget is there, right? And it's all being used on the screen. So, he kills Razor Ramon at home, and he just leaves. And that's when we cut over to Jack, who is the salesperson, or the big wig, that is going to some big event that he has to do. He has to go to some sales thing that he's doing, and he's going to Spain afterwards. And so we get to meet this douchebag Jack as he's getting a ride from his Uber driver to wherever the fuck he's going. What? Oh, nothing. I'm just making sure you're okay. There's a complimentary water in the cup holder if you'd like it. No, I don't need any water. I need you to get me to Manhattan on the double. I've got a very important business meeting. A lot of sales riding on it. Oh, didn't want to get your Ferrari banged up in the traffic. No, I'm flying to Spain after the business meeting, and I don't want my car sitting in a parking garage for a few days. Is that okay with you? Don't blame you. I thought you were a movie producer. Why is that? They're making a low-budget horror movie in the area. Thought you were one of the money people. Low-budget horror movies? Like there's any money in that. 
No, I sell stocks and I've got a good lead on some investments. It's going to make me very rich. Sounds exciting. Playing with other people's money at their expense <laughs> is exciting. Living the rock star life, huh? Fast cars, hot women, money, cocaine city. <laughs> you wish you were me. No, no, I don't. I don't think Cocaine City is a place that I really want to visit. Unless, of course, it has like a decent airport, even though I don't really like flying. Uh, it's got a good nightlife scene that doesn't involve no, like tons of cocaine. But, you know, there's a couple of guys that I remember from somewhere else. They, I think they're sports guys, and they always have mountains of cocaine. I, I wonder if they're related to this guy in any way, shape, or form. Maybe. Have you guys ever heard of P and the B? No? Uh, they're, they're, there's like these guys that they, they used to be part of this sports talk station back in the day. And they just got caught, you know, trying to get a stripper to come down to the studio. Well, B was trying to hire for P for his birthday and give him a shower show that he totally didn't get. Because one time his brother-in-law stole it from him. And so we thought he'd bring him there. But then P thought that she was trying to rob him. So he, she knocked him. Like He knocked her down the stairs. And then, you know, accidentally killed her after he had, of course, done like mountains of cocaine, right, that they normally did during the show. I mean, this was the 80s after all, okay? And cocaine was fucking everywhere. And that's where kind of like I feel like this guy is – like this guy sounds like the dude from Futurama, like that character that's the 80s business guy. And then he awakens, but he's got bonitis. You know, that's exactly the way that this dude sounds. He's like, you know, we're 80s guys. And that's what this is. I'm a, an 80s salesman. All we do is cocaine, hot chicks, yeah, and lots and lots of money. But anyway, I was talking about P and the B. But I, again, I wonder if he's actually related to those two. That's all I'm really trying to say with the whole thing. I don't want to go through the whole story of P and the B and how they you know, lost their jobs because of the whole thing and decide to go into the podcasting world because that's where they thought they'd make a lot of money, but they don't even get heard anywhere. So, you know. I, I guess I told the story of P and the B, but nonetheless, so they decide that they're going to stop off at that garage, which I guess is by a gas station, or it just seems like it's in the middle of nowhere. Like the lights are completely off when they stop outside. Like there is nothing to show that this place is actually like open. All that it is, is that there's a bunch of like blue lights. It's definitely shot like in this town, in this area. It, like they just did a covert night shot. They didn't get permission to do the shots here in this area, but yet he's like, Oh, I have to pay and I don't want to pee in the car. Well, actually I think he has to shit because he's like farting in the car. And even if he leaves the car, he's like, I I gotta go, mister. I can't stay here. And so, you know, that leaves the salesman in the back of the car as the guy's trying to go out there and find a place to go take a shit. And of course, sales guy decides that he's gonna do a fucking line of coke on his finger while he's there, and he's wondering where the fuck the driver is. But the driver on the outside gets killed by the same werewolf that killed, you know, Razor Ramon at home inside of the garage that's there. So he gets out of the car goes inside and tries to like, you know, be big, bad businessman sales guy inside of there. Where the hell are you? Better not be taking your time. You better finish your shit. So, cause I had a very fucking important meeting there. And, you know, instead of finding the guy dead outside, which basically he is, he sees blood on the ground and then he sees a bunch of cocaine and a gun. He decides to take the gun, take the cocaine, and then is attacked by the werewolf and he's bitten by the werewolf, right? The werewolf doesn't kill him. The werewolf bites him and then just kind of fucking leaves. You know, in, instead of being the OnlyFans werewolf, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm done with the killing for the night. I just wanted to do one thing. And that was bite one more guy, go home and whack it to a couple OnlyFans models. I mean, it's just the way that it is. And so like, yeah, he attacks, but I think... What also happens after he gets bit is like the dude like pushes him off and like shoots the wolf a bunch of times with the bullets that he's got there. But we never see the wolf die and those bullets in general wouldn't kill the werewolf. And again, this werewolf suit is just it's got to be a fat guy in a little werewolf coat. And so he runs back to the car. And when he gets to the car, he can't start it because the dude has the keys and he then just decides to leave the car there 
and run away. And it's hilarious because the car itself is definitely a fucking rental car. Like, it has the name of the car company on the outside of the car still, on the on the front license plate, right? And I get it. For me, like Californians, right? We have license plates on both sides of the car because it's required to be there. But here, it would at least be blank on the front. But instead, it says Matthews Motor Company from Covington, Pennsylvania. It's just, it's right fucking there. And it's like... Of course, the cheapest fucking rental that you could possibly get at a fucking rental car place, right? It's the type of, like, small-ass Chevy where somebody like me who's six feet tall, I have to sit in the fucking back seat of the car to be able to drive it fucking comfortably. Because if I even tried to move that seat back, if anybody needs to sit in the back of the car, it's basically a crush them. Like, they'd have to be, you know, four foot two to be able to sit comfortably in the back seat of this car if they were going to sit right behind me while I'm driving this god down the goddamn highway, right? Basically, anybody that's over the size of five seven can't sit in the front seat perfectly fine. So, anyway... We have him, like, run away from the car. He runs into, like, the forest, or not even the forest. Like, he just runs into, like, an open field nearby. And the wolf, like, chases him, but we never see the wolf catch up to him at all. And it's weird. And so he just kind of collapses out there. And then he's, because he's in so much pain from the bite that he has on his shoulder, which has absolutely no blood on it. The shirt is not fucking ripped. Like, nothing is wrong with it. He looks perfectly fine, but he decides, oh my god, I gotta snort some cocaine, because that's gonna make the pain go away. And funny enough, that probably would do it. Like, I know that cocaine was used before in certain situations to, like, numb areas, right? Like, my sister, when we were young, we had this, like, piece of shit Cocker Spaniel, okay? This little purebred motherfucker that we had there that only loved my mother and my cousin. I've talked about this dog before. And on Christmas, uh, you know, day, in the morning, it leaped at her and bit opened her lip to where she needed to have, like, eight stitches in her lip. She's the only one of us that had any stitches in their body. And for them to actually prepare the area, they actually had to put cocaine on it. So we always used to call her a cokehead because they, they did that when we were growing up. It's fucking hilarious to me, but... You know, at the time, it wasn't necessarily hilarious to her because we missed most of that or- like morning for Christmas. And I think that was the Christmas where I got a Genesis, if I'm not mistaken. So, but nonetheless, I still enjoyed my Genesis later on in the day. It's just that my sister, uh, she got the Christmas present of uh, 12 stitches or whatever it was, 8 stitches, and uh, cocaine. So, nonetheless, he decides to take his cocaine. And then there's an image that they use on a constant basis There's two images, one of like the cocaine, like going through his veins of his blood. It's weird. It's like his blood moves really fast back and forth. And there's like white particles that are in there. And then of a heart beating really, really fast because, you know, cocaine's going to speed up your heart. And then you get one of the best transformations I think I've ever seen in cinema. I mean, this must have like cost them a fucking fortune. And this is way better than anything that you've ever seen. In fact, this is the best transformation I've seen. No, it's even better than American Werewolf in London. And if you believe that, I have got a bridge to sell you because this is terrible. Like, he does it. They show the heart beating. And then they show, like, two still images of, like, a dude with, like, fangs growing for a second. That's definitely not stock images that's there. And then the werewolf's face and then back to the stock image, and then to the moon, and that's it. That's that's him becoming the werewolf for the night. And so now he's a werewolf, but he has glowing red eyes. Un- unlike the other werewolf that was wearing the flannel and had flat red eyes, that's how he's different. He's also wearing the same white button-up shirt that has not burst up. Like, that button-up shirt that he's wearing in this situation is literally for somebody that's like a 6XL, Okay. That's how goddamn big this shirt is. But what he was wearing was for somebody that was wearing like a large or an XL in size. So for it to like perfectly fit the werewolf, that must be the stretchiest fucking material that I've ever seen. We then cut over to a scene with a sheriff that, and nobody's going to get this fucking reference. Nobody. The only person that's going to get, there is so much of this shit of this, we've got this at home. It's ridiculous. And so 
you guys have to look up this guy, okay? There is a local wrestling outfit around here. One of those, um, you know, independent companies they have that in a lot of different areas. And it's called BTW, Big Time Wrestling. And a friend of ours actually wrestles for the outfit. I don't know if he does anymore. I don't think he does. I think he does a bunch of things around the area. But they have this guy that they used to pimp. Like crazy. Like he was the Hulk Hogan of the goddamn thing that supposedly everybody loved. He was always like the big good guy. But he was honestly way too old to be doing this shit and to being this guy. And he was his name was Badass Cody. Okay? And this guy is Badass Cody at home, who already is DDP at home. Right? That's who Badass Cody is. He's DDP, Diamond Dallas Page at home. Except for he's worse. And this guy is a worse version of Badass Cody. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. And for those who know who that is, one, bravo. Two, you're probably laughing your ass off when you think about it. But nonetheless, so we just see this sheriff for a second as he goes around his house like he's waking up for a dream. And then he goes over to a bottle of Grey Goose, pours out the water, because that's definitely not fucking Grey Goose, and then drinks it. And that's the end of the scene. Like, okay, I, I really thought this character was going to be involved in this movie more, and he is, but they made it to seem like this guy was going to be like the guy that was chasing down the werewolf and possibly like the big savior of the movie, but he's barely in the movie at all. I mean, he spends as much time on the movie as the Xenomorph does in the most recent Alien movie. Like... And probably even less than that. He's got this scene and like four others, maybe three others at max. And including the final scene of the movie where he shows up, spoiler alert, to save the day. Like, and then and I'm not going to ruin the part of what happens when he comes in to save the day. Because we'll talk about that when it gets there. But I just don't get it. Why, why would you have this guy? Why would you make this character? It doesn't make any sense. I really thought... The, where the movie was going, I would be, like, so much happier with it. If you had this guy, like, he's got an alcoholic problem. He's had he's told people about werewolves before. Nobody's believed him. And there's a rash of murders that are happening in the area, which is something we find out. And that's what's keeping him awake is that there's all these murders in their small community that's going on. And he has no idea what it possibly could be, but it happens to be the werewolf. Like... If he had some plan that would have led him down the road to like figuring out that this was something that was going to happen, great. But there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing that does this in this movie. Period. At all. I can't believe this shit. It's just, he pops up from time to time. That's literally it. And so, we, <laughs> from this... We then go to two random jackasses who are out in the woods and they are like, man, we know all these murders in this area aren't happening because of some random murderer or serial killer. It's because of some animals that are out there. And so we have a plan for these animals as they decide that they're going to hunt for the wolf that they believe is doing all of this. You hear that? I think it's the beast. Yes. Wouldn't old Sheriff Duke Larson be pissed if we caught the killer of these locals? He's a fool. He thinks all the killings are from a maniac. We know better. It's a renegade animal, not a maniac. The victims were torn apart the likes no human could do. It was animal, I say. Agreed. Savage bear? It's no bear, my friend. Uh, then what? It's a wolf. Or a pack of wolves. There's no wolves around these parts. There's been coyotes. It's wolves, trust me. <sighs> Wanna go flush them out? Yes. You go out in the woods and circle up in front of me. Then head back this way. You'll drive it right towards me. Then we'll put a bullet between its eyes. Uh... uh what? Uh, What's wrong? Uh... I, I don't want to flush it out. You, you do that. Okay. You stay here and shoot it between the eyes when it comes tearing down on you. But remember... What? You'll only have one chance to shoot it before it latches onto your throat. Uh, you stay here, I'll flush it out. That's what I thought. 
so they're just kind of like sitting out there deciding that, hey, yeah, it's definitely a wolf that's doing this shit out there, which is fine. Again, I actually think this scene sets up something nice, right? It does a really good job of setting that, yeah, there's something more supernatural or they're expecting animals to do this stuff. And again, it's bringing the sheriff into this movie that is seemingly going to be a big part of it, but it really goes fucking nowhere with the whole thing like this whole section that we've got here it just it's not about that anymore once we get to the movie crew which we're going to be getting to relatively soon so we we see these guys out there and that one dude he must have gone to the brian school of voice acting because he sounds exactly like my redneck character that i do from time to time we're gonna go out there and we're gonna go to get this wolf it's doing its stuff out there i don't know what's going on like that that literally sounds like him so then so we have this you know now our new cocaine werewolf who happens to be jack because you know he's addicted to fucking cocaine um he's out there running around and he's you know eventually the one dude that has like the country bumpkin accent runs into the werewolf and the werewolf chases him down because You know, he doesn't want to be the one to have to take the shot at the wolf. He's the one that wants to lure the wolf out. And when he's approached by him and he's chased back and he's, again, I say running, but they're like slowly jogging through the scenery that's out there. The the lit up area that they're filming at in the middle of the night. Like, and they literally are running through the same scene three times the same area until he stumble, stumble falls. And then the wolf, like, you know, there's this reaction shot of the wolf putting his foot down in front of his face and then him getting up off the ground and running. And then eventually he runs to where the dude is once again, running through the same area that they've been running through the entire time. And eventually he runs back to his friend says, Oh, it's chasing me. And his friend fires and he shoots his other friend like he's fucking Dick Cheney, you know, shooting his friend while they're duck hunting and ends up like killing his friend and then getting killed by the wolf in the same way that the guy inside the, you know, the garage gets killed where it's just the wolf on top of him kind of like biting with the mask, but nothing really happening. And then there's a shot of the moon and then there's the blood of the cocaine going through the blood and like working through his veins. And then there's a shot of the wolf snorting the cocaine pranks. He doesn't really snort it. He just takes the baggie and then like puts it up to his mouth. He doesn't even put it up to his nose. He puts it up to his mouth and then he's like, oh, yeah, that's good stuff. And then. There's like a random stripper, somebody dancing on a stripper pole, and then like lines of coke that are being shown and money. I guess he's dreaming of Cocaine City as a wolf. I I don't get it, but we do go back into wolf vision as we go look upon this lady that's in her car. And again, another one of these great CGI effects that this movie uses it's it's this is so bad. It's so bad it's good. Again, this is the first like, you know, 30 minutes of this movie and I I'm again, it's in that so bad it's good territory and I'm enjoying myself very very much at this point in the movie. And so, you know, she's out there and she's complaining about Frank. Well, Frank better meet me out here. You always meet in these weird places and I'm not doing this again blah 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 blah. And so she's busy putting on her makeup in the truck to the point that you know, Frank, the werewolf comes by and he punches his hand through the window, but they do a shot focusing from the front windshield and there's the crack like of glass, like the window breaks. It's obvious that the windows rolled down. Okay. When he's punching into the goddamn car, the window is fucking rolled down. Okay. That, there's just nothing, there's no, nothing about that. that. That's the way that it is. But the glass that cracks is the front windshield based upon the CGI, right? He punches through it. He's supposed to be punching through the glass. She can't start the fucking car because she sees the werewolf coming. But the front windshield is what gets the effect. And like, it's like he's punching through the frame and the front windshield at the same time to crack all the glass that's there. But it doesn't make any sense. 
It doesn't make any sense that the front windshield has the cracks of glass on it like it's broken. Oh. Like, you could have just made the CGI of the glass flying everywhere, but no, you had to show that some glass broke. And then, like, the final scene of her dying is her putting her hand on the front windshield where the broken glass is, and then the blood smearing all over the place. And then we see a cop car for a scene, for a second. It's like driving to the scene of the crime, I guess. And then we go on Jack, who is, you know laying next to a tree and he finally has some blood on him but it's still not in the shoulder where he got bit it's on a random part of the shirt that he's got there and this is where we're also introduced for just a moment to the film crew that's out there that was spoken about in the beginning of the movie by the uber driver as they're getting out of the house getting ready to go film some scenes we got a dude in a clown suit we've got two ladies and we got a director and a producer there's more of jack walking around clearing his face and just kind of wondering what's going on. Like he's hearing noises and he's got like, you know, this is where he's got blood over the top of his face, like on his forehead. And then he looks out and he sees, I guess the film crew filming their stuff as they complain of what's going on out there. The fact that everything is so like low budget and he's got his cocaine and he's like, I just don't know what to fucking do. And he just like runs off. We then cut back over to the sheriff where we get a little bit of a news segment that they do as he's inspecting one of the places and he gets him bombarded by a local reporter. Sheriff, Sheriff, who is committing these crimes? The public wants to know. Look, I don't have any answers for you right now. We're conducting an investigation. When we have something to report, I'll let you know. Is it a serial killer? A cult? Could be something worse. Now get out of my face. I've got work to do. And it's funny because he gets like bombarded by the news as he's inspecting the last murder scene. Like you see clips of him going from place to place to place. And he's just kind of looking around like that ain't right. There's no way that this was just a regular silver killer, but he's not saying anything. He just looks more like a drunk. And then when they get to the scene where like people are dead, there is like, pieces of fur that are there but it's like a small lock and there's a hand that's been removed but it's an obvious fucking mannequin hand that just has like a little bit of blood and it's like dirtied up like again there seems like there's something more that was going to be done with this character but it's never like fully progressed in the movie like he finds animal fur wolf fur at the scene of the crime and it looks like he's gonna take it to do something with it like do some like forensic evidence or stuff but we never see him do shit he just talks to the news that oh this might be something more and then we totally shift gears in the movie in like just a little bit it's it's weird because again i want to stay on this because This is perfectly fine. It's bad. I get it. But it's so bad, it's good. Everything's so funny. Even how cheesy, like, if he started, like, go, like I said, delving into the world of the occult and werewolves and everything, especially when we get to, like, the next scene of everything that's going on, which they do present something that's interesting, right? That is something that, like, because I'm wondering, like, why is the werewolf constantly out? Doesn't it only pop up? In, like, the full moon, are we following werewolf logic in this movie? What are we doing? And even when he's, like, looking around, there's, like, a shot of, like, the werewolf mouth opening up. And raw, and he's, like, thinking, to, like, he could be thinking to himself, no, no, it can't be that. There's no way. That's not happening around. Like, he knew the secret of the werewolf. It happened before. Or it was, like, his son or some shit like that. Like, anything. Anything just to follow this character trying to figure out what the werewolf I would be totally down for. And it can be cheesy and stupid and dumb and low budget, but instead it goes in a whole different direction, which is just weird. And we'll get into that in just a bit because we have to go back to Jack before we start talking about the film crew. And that's where things go off the rails. So we go back to Jack and Jack is wandering the countryside. And that's when he runs into a lady who is making herself lunch and we learn about the werewolf and the fact that the werewolf that we've been seeing happens to be her son. 
and her son happens to now be dead. And the reason that he constantly is changing into the werewolf and why she realizes that Jack is also marked and that he'll keep becoming the werewolf is because they have an addiction and a vice. And that vice is what turns them into the werewolf. Hello? Whoa, whoa. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm not going to hurt you. Things I've seen take a lot more than you to scare me. Who are you? My name's Jack. And you are? Lysandra. Sorry to bother you. Look, I'm in a lot of trouble. Do you have a phone I could use? Ain't got one of those. Do you live nearby? I live here and there. People around here call me the Gypsy of the Woods. Cooking up a spell over there? Cooking up lunch. I've been expecting you. You have? Eventually, those that have been marked find their way to me. Marked? Under your shirt. How did you know? You're marked with the beast. Marked with the curse. Marked for death. The same beast that killed your driver. The Uber driver? And wounded you. It was my son. There's something about these woods. Evil is drawn here. Now you will become a demon that can't stop killing. No, this is crazy. That's not me. And not just when the moon is full. You see, he was addicted to his vice, like you are. I can smell it on you. He was addicted to the devil's lettuce. You mean, weed? It changed him. Day or night, like your vice will do to you. No. No, this is crazy. If I killed that creature, then that means... You killed my son! So, the whole thing is that her son was addicted to weed. Okay? And I'm not going to go into the whole philosophy that... I believe that people can be... Can use it as a vice. Addiction, there is some credence to it in some way, shape, or form. But I think it's also something that it's not like even like tobacco. I think that's a worse addiction than he possibly could have to weed. Okay? I really don't care about weed, whatever. I'm not here to make any type of statement about the whole thing. Cocaine, on the other hand, that's a hell of a drug. And you're just not going to want to even fucking touch that shit. But, you know, he's so addicted to weed that every time he smokes up, he becomes the werewolf. Hence... Why Jack, when he did his cocaine, because he's addicted to cocaine, he becomes the werewolf. So the werewolf is more about vices than anything else. It can be a representation of addiction. It's interesting. I, you know, again, it's one of the reasons why I like horror movies a lot is that they can try to use these things, these like supernatural and like gory things to like tell something different and better and it doesn't necessarily some people won't necessarily see the meaning because they're just enjoying the horror aspect of stuff and some people you know they'll get the meaning they'll get the stuff that's going on in the movie and it works right and sometimes it's maybe a little ham-fisted in the way that it's doing the stuff and it's a little bit overboard when it's doing the stuff and other times it's perfectly fine right it's subtle enough to where if you catch it you catch it if you don't you don't who the fuck cares so you know it, it's just funny because we never saw him kill the son he never killed the other werewolf he shot the werewolf a couple of times never shot him in the face and when we look at the son it's some weird like image like almost like ai art or it looks like alucard from fucking helsing that we got there shot in the face with his grin and he's dead on the ground just laying there in front of her like is she burning his body to cook her lunch is that what's going on i don't fucking know but it's ridiculous and it's fucking hilarious at the same time and like i don't 
I don't get the whole thing. Like again, I never saw him kill her. I even I've gone back through this movie three times, and you don't ever see that happen. He just the werewolf like attacks the car, and then he runs off, and now he's the werewolf. He never like killed the son, and she starts attacking him like she did, like he did, right? And to the point that like she's got this stick that she's using to stir the food with, but it's not dirty at all. It's weird. And so she attacks it with him, but he grabs the stick from her and then he stabs her. And of course, you know, it doesn't go through her. It just, she holds it on her like side away from the camera, like her left side. And then she's on the ground and like the stick is just like, she's holding it against her body. Like she got stabbed with it. And he runs away in terror that he's now killed this lady. Right. And so from here, this is where, like I said, this is the point where the movie starts to really go off the rails. And why do I really say that, right? You would think that this movie's kind of already gone off the rails. I mean, it, just with the, the whole premise of the movie alone, it has, really. It's about a guy that gets bitten by a werewolf. He's already addicted to cocaine, and cocaine is what turns him to a werewolf at any time, which... Again, like I said, that's an interesting idea. It's a very interesting idea that that's the route that they went with the whole thing. But it doesn't really get any more interesting after that. What this movie ends up turning into is kind of like a meta commentary on the fact that this movie is cheap by the movie that's being filmed within the movie. And here, th this is how we, we start this whole thing off. The legend can't be true about the killer clown. Who else killed all of our friends? And if we're not careful, if we... If we... <laughs> What's the next line? Jeez, not again. Cut. Fucking cut. Fear the line. The line is, we're next if we can't stop this crazy clown from killing again. Who wrote this stuff? I did. We've rehearsed this a hundred times. This is like breakfast at Tiffany's. It's a Friday the 13th knockoff. I'm sorry, all these scenes blur together. I hear you, sister. One scene is as mundane as the next. <laughs> Excuse me, I can barely see or hear anything. Hey, I'm trying to make a movie here. Uh, let's, let's go. Back to one. Camera ready. Sound ready. We're using the onboard mic. Yeah, forgot. No budget, no problem. I'm going to make this movie, even if it kills me. Action! So, the director is addicted to cocaine as well, and then we have two actresses and an actor, and that's all they're using with their movie. That's it, right? The whole idea is that this is an extremely cheap horror movie that's being made that is a knockoff of Friday the 13th, but it's got a killer clown and it's got school teachers or something like that. And they're the only actor and actresses in the whole movie. And it's being shot on just like a handheld video camera, kind of reminiscent of the old days that this movie would have been shot on just a VHS camera, like going direct to video. Like that's the whole thing that's going on on the side of the movie. This is the B story of the movie, but it's not going to be the B story of the movie. It's going to become the A story of the movie and not necessarily that they're filming it. It's just that they're filming a cheap horror movie and there just happens to be a werewolf around like things never really get much interesting than this. And, and even to the fact, like they go through another scene where like, you know, we, well, one, we see Jack just randomly walking through the forest to eventually sniff some more cocaine and turn into the werewolf because he's just lost in the same area that he was a couple seconds ago to being lost in the same area that he was just a couple of seconds ago like if it sounds that i'm repeating myself it's because that's what the movie does right until he does cocaine again and his heart starts pumping and his blood starts going and he starts you know transforming once again in another great transformation scene that he becomes the werewolf you know literally he falls over and then all of a sudden he's there as the werewolf in all its glory in like bright sunlight so we basically here then have the rest of our like 
cast of characters. We've got this, you know, the main girl who's like the, you know, it's odd again. And then this, I'm, I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible. Everybody in this movie has bad teeth. Everybody in this movie has just terrible teeth from the guy from the Uber driver that was missing teeth directly to the girl that's ultimately going to be our final girl who just has bad teeth to the uh, the dude that's in the, the mask to Jack to just everybody. I, I don't know what it is. It's the first thing that I know, even to the werewolf whose teeth looks absolutely, absolutely terrible right in in the whole thing and, and ends up getting coked with cocaine at a couple of times but it's just i i don't want to knock on that type of appearance of anybody that's out there it's just it's so in your face and you're just like oh my god that th- that's a bad grill that they've got there and and not to knock anything about how anything you know, anybody else looks but the the other thing is is that we, and we couldn't tell while we were watching this movie the girl that ends up being the final girl in the movie she is constantly like has this red glow to her face and we couldn't figure out if it was lighting or if that was just her face. I I'm not trying to be like overtly mean at Red Face McGee over here, but like it literally looks like that like she's like either heat sensitive or maybe it was just like really cold when they were doing stuff out in the middle of nowhere and they it was just like it was so cold that just the cold from everything that was going on was just affecting her face and that's kind of maybe what i believe more and there is even like a little scene that they do where one of the girls is complaining about god damn it's so cold outside start with the blood where she's being like slashed by the clown and the other girl the final girl she's spraying the fake blood in a fucking ketchup tube up at her and that's probably like i said before with all the blood budget that's probably what it went to was this little scene that was right there other than the little scraps of blood that end up on people's face right and she just was like oh it's too cold i can't take this i'm a real actress and then to where of course the director like calms her down with the whole situation and then there's this long ass scene and it is way too long it is like five maybe it feels like it's 10 minutes of the scene where there's a guy that randomly parks somewhere and then walks slowly out into the woods with an axe and then starts chopping wood. And it feels like it goes on forever, but I don't think it's as long as we think it is into where like you start hearing random sounds in the the forest of the werewolf and everything like that. And then like you get this little scene that they've got here where there's more movie meta. You never said there were wolves out here. Or bears or whatever the hell that was. You're right. I didn't. All right, send in the clown. This rubber mask is freezing to my face and crumbling. We could only be so lucky. Is that his mark so I can get focus on? Close enough. These are just shit pictures. And that's just a commentary on this movie and what they're making here. So a lot of the stuff that happens after this is just directly related to that meta. And even then it's just kind of like, okay, I get it. Like this is where I think the, like I said, it goes off the rails and from it being like this really funny, campy, ridiculous, so bad. It's good movie to just kind of being like a try hard. And it just, it doesn't necessarily work for me. Are there still ridiculous things that happen? Yeah, there's still laughable things and it has its moments. But from this moment, it just kind of goes downhill. And it's weird to say that when it comes to like these types of movies and from what I'm expecting from it. I'm not expecting this to be some great cinematic masterpiece or something like that. Like if anything, I'd expect this to, you know, take a line from James Rolfe. This is a cinemasker. Right? That's what I think that this is going to be. It's not necessarily going to be high quality stuff. It's going to be a massacre of cinema in a fun way. But it ends up not really being that. As you try to get just like, it just feels like they're trying to be super meta about what they're doing. We know we're making a bad movie. So we're going to make a bad movie within the bad movie that's a representation of the movie that we're currently making and that you're currently watching. And we're not going to outright say these things, but we kind of are at the same time, 
right? And that's everything that kind of happens with the way the rest of the movie works. And we just lose sight of things that we have in the movie. And that's like the biggest thing that I feel is is like the failure of this movie to ultimately be a really fun and funny movie and, and celebrate the whole it's so bad it's good, right? Again, if I was making this movie personally, and, and I didn't, and, and the thing is, is that, I, again, I'm not faulting the people that made this movie and I haven't made a movie and, and I know that they know what they're doing, but even if I make these things, I still would have gone way off board and I would have involved the sheriff way more, way more. Have him visit the set, have Jack be there, not being the werewolf. And the sheriff comes around and he realizes, oh no, he's catching on to me. And then he's like slowly killing the people. That's, and I don't know, just really lean into the, the werewolf versus sheriff thing and have this be a B story instead of for the last, you know, 30 minutes of this movie that's here, 40 minutes of this movie be about the movie really that's what it feels like and there still is like death like we have like i said this guy in the forest that goes out there to chop wood and they're looking around and then jack as the werewolf comes by and kills him and it's like okay just to have a random killing that's there like it's decent and except for the laughable part of this is when he like grabs the axe from the dude and then like hits him in the face with it but it's like it's so slow that it touches his face so that it can leave a red mark of like you know fake blood but it's like 70s really bright red paint blood it's not like thick cornstarch blood looking blood like we have nowadays and I feel like that's a choice. I feel like a lot of the stuff like that and, and things that they do, it's really a choice, not in necessarily in terms of the budget, but for that feel that they're trying to give that they're, they are trying to do this. Look, we're making a bad movie and this is a bad movie. And we know we're making a bad movie. So we're going to make things as bad as possible. And hopefully it turns out to be kind of funny. And in cases it does like this, in case like this, it works. It is funny when you see it and it hits the face and he's just really trying to like not make it like super serious. And it's like slow-mo without it being slow-mo but then there's still like those really terrible effects where the blood is just on the screen and it's reused you know stock art of blood flying over the place and even when like he's just on top of him not even attacking him, the blood is flying on the screen like yeah that's that's part of the charm when we get into those things but it's just kind of everything else right so you know, after we see the the kid, you know, or the, the I say the kid, but random dude die out there, we see, you know, I and I don't remember the character's name for this because I really don't care about any of these characters here. The only person I really care about from now on is fucking Jack. But the one girl's out there and she sees everything's going bad and it's just a shit show. This film really is a shit show. Hey, Benita, we're going to need you in front of the camera soon, okay? I mean, don't worry, you know, he's, uh, he's far side. What the hell is that? You said you wanted a gritty 80s look, and this baby will do the trick. That's a Super 8 camera? No one uses that anymore. At least use a 16mm or some 35mm short X. Well, you get what you pay for, huh? I have to pee. And I'm hungry. My feet are numb. All right, everyone. That's it. Into the cabin for some rehearsals. Thank you. I still don't know why we all had to come here in one vehicle. Because Slash is too cheap to pay for all of our gas. Perks of being a producer. Tight ass. Get it? Because it's all just a shitty fucking horror movie that they're barely paying any money for. Then we go over and we see Jack walking through the forest once again, and he's having, like, memories, I guess, of him being the wolf and killing people that are, like, flashing. He's looking around, and he ends up just kind of, like, once again collapsing, but this time on a pile of, like, wood out in the middle of nowhere that he, you know, after he eventually lays down. 
And so we go back over inside to the film crew once again as they're doing their little, you know, talk around the round table, and we learn out why the director's name is Slash. So, Slash. Yeah. Why do they call you Slash? Is it art imitating life? I mean, are you really a serial killer? Nope. It's because I am the director slash producer slash editor slash craft service slash transportation. Yeah, you're a regular one-man wrecking crew. You mean hack. Or tour. Thanks, man. You get it. That's why this film is a slash cinema production, a classic where you work long hours for low pay. <laughs> no pay. Where I give the fans what they want. Lots of blood and lots of boobs. Alistair has the blood part covered, and Tiff and Benita have the boobs part covered. Well, we all know how Tiffany got the role. She fucked the director. <gasps> you said it was a secret. I didn't tell anyone. So, yeah, it's another one of those situations. It's funny because even, like, when you look at the cast, like, if you go to IMDb and they put the cast of characters, and, like, it's... Slash is the only other one I remember because of this scene, right? Where he's talking about why he's the, you know, the director slash producer slash editor slash script writer slash, you know, ass stand in slash ball cleavage fluffer slash, you know, uh, makeup maker uh, slash hot dog fryer slash, I don't know, dog muncher you know, muff diver, whatever you want to fucking call him. He's the slash everything because he does all this stuff. And it's funny because the director of this movie, you know, Mark uh, Polonia, he is actually in the movie. I don't know who he plays in the movie. And I'm honestly guessing that he's the sheriff of the movie. It's funny because you can go through the cast and you look at IMDb. The only other person that actually has a name on IMDb is Bryce Kennedy, who plays Jack. That's it. Everybody else just doesn't have a character name on the whole list. And the only one that has a photo is Marie De Lorenzo, who I believe is the girl that gets killed in the car, right? With the really shitty effect where the windshield gets crashed in. Like, at least looking at her picture, that's possibly her. But it could be anybody else in this film. I, I really don't fucking know. Well, there's a couple. There's Jeff Kirkendall and Michael Karodish. But, again, I don't know well jeff kirkendall is one of the rednecks that shoots his friend he's the one that shoots his friend like dick cheney over there but it's just like nobody has character names nobody has uh, anything it's it's just that's the way that everything is and i don't know which actor plays who towards the end of this movie so like i can't really point people out except for the guy that plays jack that's it and i recognize the picture based upon this movie because i believe that even that picture that he uses for imdb is this guy it's like <laughs> and this this is not a flex from me or anything like that but you know a couple of years ago i was asked to do like a small bit part in a movie by a friend of the podcast jed bryden who did unlisted owner right that's his big movie which is a very fun movie and honestly like and this is not a knock against jeb or anything like that because i love the guy and he was very nice to have me included in the the, the movie when he did like a director's cut version of the movie like that is a so bad it's good movie it has some really great parts in it but there it's definitely like it's independent Right. That's what I'm trying to say. And he did a lot to make that movie, like have it totally done. And it's fun and it's entertaining in that way in the stuff that goes there. And yeah, are there annoying characters? Of course, there's always annoying characters in bad horror movies. There's quite a bit in this and they happen to all be in the second half of the goddamn movie. But it's like I have an IMDb and I don't have a picture up there. Right. And I had to have an IMDb because I'm a part of that goddamn movie. I'm not like in SAG or anything like that, but you can actually look me up over there. If you look up unlisted owner, I'm underneath it. I'm there. I'm just one of the guys because I'm in the beginning with good friend, you know, Neil Frazier that has been on the podcast before. He and I did like a short little scene where we recorded this thing together over Zoom and it was fun and cool. I really enjoyed that experience as well. And I, I can't thank him enough to say that, hey, I'm in a movie like that's a cool fucking thing to like say about yourself in anywhere. I'm not trying to like 
tout my shit or anything like that, but it just happened to be something that was like set up. And originally, you know, uh, our good friend Dave was supposed to do, it, but he wasn't able to do it. And he recommended, Hey, why don't you get Brian and Neil to do it? And so Brian and Neil did it together and it was cool. I, I, totally like love that little thing and i can say hey ma i'm in a fucking movie even if i'm only in it for two seconds at the beginning of the goddamn movie i'm fucking there and so it's like that's what i'm tr- all i'm trying to say with this whole thing here is that that's the way it looks on the cocaine web like werewolf imdb page there are no pictures for everybody it's like this is the only thing they've done and they've never done anything since and they haven't done enough to be like oh well we're gonna put our picture out there and there's only a couple that have have done that right so that's what i'm trying to say with this whole situation that that's going on here so it's it's just funny in a way that like how they're doing these things with this movie and they're you know again i just I like the meta stuff when it works and at times like I guess I just wish it hadn't focused so much on this or brought this in way sooner because there's like a bigger setup of everything else in the first 40 minutes and the last of it's really going to be with the werewolf coming upon these guys making the shitty horror movie making fun of the fact that they're making a, a shitty horror movie in a shitty horror movie right and that's that's really what i'm trying to say when it comes to this and it going off the rails for me because it doesn't again like i said it doesn't become as fun as it was before right i just wish it hadn't gone this route or you introduce this whole thing earlier and maybe jack never meets these people right cuz he's going to meet these people eventually and i'm saying jack meets them but not as jack where he does in the movie meet them as as the werewolf and like praise upon them. And then you have the sheriff like coming in and trying to save the day. And maybe the, the, you know, the cast and crew go to the police because, Oh my God, there's something chasing us. And then the sheriff's like, no, that's not real. Even though he knows that there's something weird going out there, creating all these murders. And they're trying to like, you know, protect their town, even though there's a movie being filmed here so that this stuff doesn't get out. Like there's a lot of, I think, silly interesting things that you could do but this is the weird route that they went so you know when they're doing this and we're learning about you know the director over here and what is why he's called slash and all this stuff they realize that they've got no cell phone connection out there and they can't contact everybody there's a stupid little scene of them standing outside trying to find a signal and i'm just like okay but you guys got a car and you could always drive away somewhere and like why does that need to make a big appearance in this movie other than to be like filling in time for what the movies do to get the runtime longer like that kill that happened in the forest that is padding that one is straight up padding you just decided hey this is going to be cool and you left a lot more in than you didn't necessarily need to have like is it unnecessary that the dude gets killed not really Right? Another kill in the movie is perfectly fine as the werewolf's killing closer and closer to these people making this movie. But that seems like something that should be towards the beginning of the movie. Like, a lot of the stuff that happens in the beginning of the movie should be just, I think in the the way I feel, the first ten minutes of the movie. Ridiculous things, people being killed, learning about his addiction to cocaine, even meeting the lady, maybe the first fifteen minutes. Then, bring in these characters. But, 40 minutes in the movie it's really rough to do that in so they after we have this conversation then we get a news program alert where we have the sheriff talking to the community that he's trying to figure out what's going on today here this morning i'd like to make a formal statement regarding the rash of murders that have been plaguing our idyllic community after an intense investigation it is now clear that the perpetrator of these crimes is actually a rogue animal, not a serial killer, not an escaped mental patient. We are urging each and every one of our community members to please be cautious when going outdoors, both during the day and at night. I am working closely with the Game Commission, as well as several big game hunters, so that we can quickly capture and kill this animal and bring a sense of safety back into our lives. And this kind of is what I was talking about earlier. Like, 
this scene fits the movie that was going on prior to this, not what's going to happen after this whole situation for, like, again, focusing just on the movie makers and the werewolf coming upon them in the whole situation that's going on there. It's, again, like, he's going out there, he's talking to the community, he's trying to, like, show everybody that, hey, there's something greater going on here. And you could have had, like, stupid press people asking dumb questions like, what do you mean that there's something more sinister going on here? Are you saying, some people are saying that it's, uh, you know, a wolf. And it's funny because the scene, again, like, there's just a quick shot of him with, like, he's just in a random room, basically what feels like in front of a green screen, and he just has, like, one microphone that's, like, pointed at him, but not, it's, like, off to the side, and then it's a bunch of fucking stock footage of them, like, looking at crime scenes that aren't even related, and then, like, a fucking cop car with its lights on, and that's it, and it says file footage over there, like, I could make this stuff in fucking Premiere Pro or something like that, like really cheesy with stock stuff that they have there. And again, that's a charm to the movie for me. That's silly. That makes me laugh and giggle. And and I really want some of that stuff. And it's just, again, it's just kind of where it's going. And again, that dead horse in the corner, he's going to get beat quite a bit when it comes to the ending of this movie. So we then go back over, we get this like aerial shot of I guess where they are in this area where there's the woods and this has to also be stock footage for the area that they're in because when they focus in like everything's lush and there's all these leaves everywhere but they're when we go back it's like the trees are stripped bare of all their leaves that's where I'm believing that everything is like super cold and I bet you that's again why her face was so goddamn red and so we see Jack come out of the forest and he's acting like oh I'm so hungry and he's got this like, creature? I don't even know what the fuck this is. Is it an opossum? We thought, we, we came to the conclusion as we were watching this that this might be an armadillo, but it's such a bad, rubbery, like, creature. And it looks like it's just like a used monster from a random monster movie that he, like, bites into and he's like, Ugh, no. And he drops and he starts walking away. And that's where he actually collapsed onto the like wood that's out there. And so we cut back over to God damn it, this fucking scene. We go back over to where the the people are filming the movie and they decide that it's time for the sexy scene. So because of course boobs sell movies. I am allergic to the cold. So can we get this going? Ready? Yes. And action. <clears throat> Pardon. Um, in the script, why is this scene even happening? Because you can never have too many boobs or butts in a film. Oh, okay. Um, when is it my turn? Now, ball down and make out. That's it's not, not in the, the script. script. It was worth a try. All right, cut. Take 10 while I try to figure out how to stretch the shitty script out. Let's go for a walk. Okay. Get it? Because this is a shitty script and it needs to be stretched out even more. And I love, like, they're like, they're supposedly showing their boobs or being sexy, but they're all wrapped up in their clothes, like a bunch of coats and sweaters and all this other shit. And there's, oh, oh, yeah, look at my boobies. Look at that. I'm going to rub all over me. And if you guys would watch me, I'm actually making the motions on this. Side. Put that in your head at the same time. I'm cupping my tits. I'm pushing them together. I'm rubbing them up and down. Oh, yeah, you like the way that looks. Don't you want a little uh, hairy nipple in your face, don't you? Yeah, I'm bouncing them back and forth just for you. And not in the cool, like, buff guy way where he can just, like, flex his pecs and they bounce up and down. No, I'm shaking what my mama gave him because my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. That's right. You love this ass, don't you? You guys just want to think about this for the next 15 minutes. I could keep going on. I got to figure out a way to stretch this podcast even further. But, hey, nonetheless, <laughs> the shitty podcast, I should might add. Uh, but it, it's just, like, it's so, again, this is, this is another one of those moments where it's funny 
But it, they go right back into the whole thing of like, we're going to be meta about the whole thing and talk about how this shit script is shitty. And I got to figure out things. I do like the line. I think it's funny when he goes, well, you know, it was worth a try when he tries to get them to go down on the ground and make out. And they decide, oh, fine. We're going to go on a walk. And even the dude, it's funny too when he's like, so when is it my turn to show up? Like, hey, you know what? Doing the clown suit. Pull up those those pants that you got for those, that clown outfit. Get yourself a little ball toe going on. Yeah, get it going on there. And not everybody needs to have camel toe in this movie. You don't just need to have vagina toe. You got to get some testicle toe going in there. Maybe you can put a mushroom stamp directly on everybody. Yeah, just pull it tight. Take off those draws and make sure that dick is flanging wild in there. Give it to everybody. Everybody wants to see that impression of that dick, right? That's what people are coming to this movie for, is for dick, not fucking boobs and vagina, right? You don't want to see that shit. Who gives a fuck about that? You want to see dick. But nonetheless, so, of course, they go off into the woods, and there's Jack laying on a pile of wood. It's just, like, it's so fucking random that it's out there. Like, it's just a bunch of wet wood. That's in a pile. Look like somebody tore down a barn. Like they're in the middle of Amish country and they're going to reuse this stuff to build another barn in just a little bit. But that was the perfect place to do it in. And like they walk on scene. Okay. Our two female leads here. They walk on scene. It is not covered by anything. It is out in the fucking open. If you look straight, you see the giant pile of wood. You see Jack laying there. But of course, they don't see Jack at all. They don't see Jack shit right? Absolutely nothing. They just walk there and they're talking because one of the girls finds the other girls super hot. And that means that she wants to get with her. And the other one's like, I didn't know you felt that way. And I'm just like, you two aren't that hot. I mean, you're not attractive to me. You're probably attracted to somebody, but not with those teeth, you both of you it's just oh my god it's such a weird awkward scene and the fact that they don't notice jack until he makes a noise makes it even fucking worse i was hoping to spend some time with you really yeah i think you're hot does that surprise you no i mean i think i'm hot too i just didn't know you went that way i go lots of ways Mm. my pronouns are they them What's yours? She, her, yours. All right. I feel you. I'm counting on it. We can get together later. Uh, What the? Is he dead? What what happened? What? Who are you? We found you here, laying here in the woods. You look like you were an accident. What happened? It was, uh, a bear. Yeah, it attacked me while I was hiking. In a business suit? Sure, you gotta look your best, right? It came at me, vicious, like it was high on something. Well, come on, we'll help you. Oh, thank you very much. You have no idea what I've been through. My name's Jack, by the way. Uh, Why do you smell like roadkill? Like, it's super cringy. Okay, the whole thing is cringy in the way that they do it. You know, what's your pronouns? And I don't have any problems with that, but it's just the way that it's done. I'm just like, oh, God. Like, do you really need to do that? Oh, I'm a they, them. Oh, what are you? I'm a she, her, and yours. Like, it's just like, oh, God, that's that's just cringy. And, and the thing is, when you're like, oh, yeah, I, you think I'm hot? I think I'm hot, too. Like, I feel like that was a mess up. Like, it was supposed to be, I think you're hot, too. But they just left it in. And then just like, when they find Jack laying down, oh, my God, we found you here, here in the middle of the woods. But it's an open fucking area. It's just a giant set of, like, it's just planes. 
There's nothing there. There's forest on like the outside of the area they're in, but this is a wide open fucking space and he's right the fuck there. It's not like he's a fucking cat randomly hiding in the house that you live in. They found a way to get inside the cupboards or some shit. No, he's just like a fucking lazy ass house hippo that's just laying at the foot of the couch. He's just there and you just walked in and you're like, oh, hey, what's up, Ace? And he's just like, hey, what's up? And that that's the whole thing. He's right fucking there. You can't fucking miss him. But, oh my God, not until he makes the, the whole noise and everything. And then he's just like, you know, they're like, you look rough. Yeah, there's something that attacked me. Uh, a bear. And he looked like he was high on something. You know, making a reference to cocaine bear and the whole thing like that. And it's just like, and you're wearing a business suit? Yeah, you got to dress to impress. When are you going to go meet the cocaine bear? You need to make sure you're wearing your best. That's why I wear Van Housen. Van Housen, not a sponsor of the Terrible Terror podcast, but a sponsor if you're going to get your ass kicked by a bear high on cocaine. So then we get another shot after this of the sheriff driving around in a random Chevy truck, right? I guess Chevy had some sponsorship or some shit in this movie, or it just happens to be like random trucks. But again, it's also got the in the license plate uh, in the front of the goddamn truck. It's got like the dealership that maybe they rented it from just happens to be in the front of the whole thing as well. It's still, you know, it's like block something. I, I don't know. I couldn't really make it out trying to like freeze fame the film and figure out what's going. It could be fucking Brock Purdy's vehicle. I don't know what it is, but it's driving by. And then on the side of it, it just has like a piece of construction paper is what it looks like. Just taped to the side of it that says county sheriff. Like they didn't get the, the rights to, you know, borrow like a local sheriff car or anything like that. And I doubt that any police institution in anywhere in this place in this country is going to have a car. Even the smallest podunk fucking area is going to have something that just uses construction paper to say what they are. So then now we go back over to the house where Jack's being introduced to the film crew and we basically continue on from there. So... What do you do for a living, Jack? I'm a stockbroker. Make high-end deals in Manhattan. Very lucrative. Your story of survival would make a great movie of the week. Speaking of which, we have our own movie to make. Yeah, we don't want to lose our day line here. Say, when are you guys leaving? I took an Uber here and lost my cell phone. We'd call someone, but we have no cell service way out here. Listen, we're finishing up today, and then we have some pickup shots tomorrow. So, hang out. Get cleaned up and we'll take you home. Let's go, people. Okay, so your big scene is up next. The two counselors are getting it on, hot on hot action. And then, bam, slice and dice. I got a quick question. Is there any way that I can show remorse for my actions? What the hell are you talking about? You know, a character arc before I... No, 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 no. You stalk the kids, and then you murder them. That's your arc! Fucking actors! <sighs> All right, everyone, let's break for lunch. One hour. <sighs> Three years at the Royal Academy for this? Ha 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 ha. He's a trained actor, and he's here playing a slasher clown, and he wants to have something more put into the film, some remorse that he might have for the fact that he's killing these now camp counselors. Didn't he call them teachers early in the film? Like, yeah, okay, so these people, they have multiple roles, yet it's just, like I said, the same three fucking people throughout the whole fucking movie. I get it. You get it. We move on from there. We go see Jack. He's laying down inside of the house, trying to have himself a little nap. And it's funny, too, because now he no longer cares about the big deal that he was supposed to do, where he's going to fly to you know Spain, probably hook up with some Spanish hookers that are over there, and go to Cocaine City, wherever the fuck that's going to be, which I think is just him sitting in his hotel room, snorting a bunch of coke, and then jacking off to the hotel porn that he's not going to pay for, because he's going to tell the front desk, I didn't order that shit. 
just because he was high in cocaine and horny as a motherfucker. But anyway, so he's having dreams there of him being the werewolf for a moment, killing somebody, eating the roadkill raw, and it's just like, okay, I, I get it, and holding his arm. Then we go back over to the, the filmmakers as the director slash over here, he decides that you know, he needs to get some footage, like found footage style footage, and he makes the producer, you know, slash cinematographer that they've got there. Why isn't that guy's name Slash? Isn't he doing multiple things in this like movie as well? He's the cinematographer, he's the sound guy, he's the light guy, he's the one that wrangles everybody in. He should have the name Slash too, not just the director with all his weird looking tattoos that he's got on his body. Actually, they're not that bad. I just said that because I saw tattoos. But nonetheless, so he's being forced to go out there and film some, like, handheld shaky cam for, like, found footage shit that's going on. Meanwhile, everybody's going to sit back, enjoy lunch, and Slash sits down with Jack, and he figures out that Jack is probably Jonesen because Jack, he can, well, well Slash, can recognize a coke fiend because he's one himself. I'd like to be following those two girls. On-set romances never last. Tomorrow they'll be at each other's throats. How long has it been since you had some? Had what? Coke. Come on, man. Game recognizes game. I know withdrawal symptoms. It has been a while. <laughs> well, then lucky for you, I have just what the doctor ordered. Purely medicinal purposes. Believe it or not, I'm not a fan of on-set romances. Well, you sure fooled me. After this gig, I'm going to LA to make it big. Well, this gig wasn't too bad. Some money is better than no money. Lots of actors get their start in horror movies, so I'm gonna check this off the list and go make real movies. No offense. I gotta go get cleaned up. So of course I forgot to mention that the two girls they go back to the you know the house that they're staying in, the the shitty trailer B and B that they're staying in out there, and <laughs> decide that this is their chance to have that on set romance. Right, basically to go bang their brains out. Well, I guess finger blast their brains out or whatever you want to call it with the whole situation. And while they go in the back, and then it's like Jack's like, I'd like to go hang out with those two instead and follow them back there, if you know what I mean. Is this the quality of woman that you're getting, Jack? These two? Because I'm pretty sure if you're like this big hotshot guy that has money and you go to Cocaine City all the goddamn time, which is a very expensive place to go, I'm pretty sure unless you want to, you like, you know, you're going for low hanging fruit. That's not the type of ladies that you'd be like, Oh yeah, I want to fuck both of them. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not like attractive in some way, shape or form. They're just, they're not my type. And I would assume that for somebody like this, that's very superficial and constantly high. Okay. never mind. He's constantly high in cocaine. He probably fuck a fucking mattress if he could or a couch, like a certain somebody, but nonetheless, you know, they go into the back room and that's where the director realizes that, hey, Jack, you're probably having withdrawals from your Coke. We're going to give you some of this Coke over here. Unbeknownst to him, that Coke is going to turn him into a raging fucking horny ass werewolf that's probably going to fuck him to death. But probably not. He's just going to eat and kill him. That's really what's going to happen. That's going on over there. So then we go back to the girls and they've like finished up having sex i guess because the you know our final girl she's putting back on her shirt and then she's like i'm gonna go take a shower and then we get gratuitous nudity for just a little bit of the final girl we we get boobs and we get butt and like it's like awkward like it's i don't know if it's meant to be sexy but it's like it's like you're watching somebody just like change and actually take a shower and I'm like, this is not very sexy. Like, okay, this is what you decided to do is just, just have her focus with a bar of soap and water running down her ass crack. And I have to admit, she does have a nice ass. I'm going to say that, uh, you know, but it's just like, okay, again, you couldn't have shown any other boobs or 
Anybody else naked and you almost went down a little bit too far in one of the shots and showed the whole front, gave us the whole package? Like, it's just, it's odd. I, I don't know why all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere we get this. Like, I get why. And they, they explain it even themselves in the movie because boobs sell fucking films in the way that it is. And then we go back over to the kitchen and it's Jack and Slash. They're going at it comparing, like, how they snort lines and how much they love the fucking Coke. And then we go to go see the producer out there, like, with his camera and basically motherfucking, you know, Slash over here. I'll give him what he wants and then starts like filming out there with his like eight millimeter camera that he's got as he's doing some footage together of just like the landscapes and shit like that. We go back over into the kitchen and it's funny because they put that in the movie as well. And again, this is definitely padding in what they're doing with everything because we still have like 17 minutes of the movie left to go. But there's not much more to do because we get shots of that, shots of Clown Boy laying there, shots of uh, the other girl painting her nails, more shots of boobs in the shower and everything like that just in front of your face for a bit. Like, okay, I get it. You you want to show nudity back to them snorting coke and then, you know, Jack slamming his head down on the table because now all of a sudden the coke has decided to take its like its stroll and i'm pretty sure that the way that they're snorting coke is not necessarily the way that they're you're supposed to snort coke cuz they literally are just like rubbing their noses on the table and pushing in one side of their nose to snort it wouldn't you be using like a metal straw or some shit like that so that it's just not over the place like it's literally on their forehead all over the face of their you know they're on the top of their nose sides of their face it's just all over the place and then we get the transformation of jack back into the werewolf where his face like distorts a little bit then he falls off camera and he comes back as the werewolf as like the slash is like cheering him on and then he pulls out his phone he starts recording him he's like yeah this is gonna be great you're gonna be a star this is wonderful and then of course you know werewolf jack chases him outside and ultimately kills him like over by another part of the house and then it's like they do the found footage stuff as jack's like walking around out there and you can also tell it's really cold because you can see their breath coming out of their mouths and that's not like just random like graphics or stuff that's being some of it kind of is but sometimes it actually looks like there so he he basically punches the director in the stomach which ultimately kills him and he dies outside then we go over to our producer, cinematographer guy, and he's out there like doing stupid little dances and stuff with the camera. Again, MF and the director. And then all of a sudden he hears a noise, turns around, and there's our werewolf. And where he's like, oh, did he, did, you know, Slash put you up to this? To which Jack goes, attacks, and kills him in another up close, just like biting scene in weird colors on the camera with the you know, stock footage, blood flying everywhere. And then the last shot is just the camera with all the film, like coming out of it and a shot of the producer dead on the ground with like what is supposed to be, I guess, claw marks across his face, but it's just like three streaks of the really fake blood. We see the sheriff again for a second as he's got his gun out, like walking in the forest. And that's, basically it and he goes back to the car like he walks down a small hill and then walks back and then we get a quick shot of the fucking werewolf for a moment as you know we have the clown and we have our final girl sitting down in the kitchen wondering what the hell is going on and where is everybody they're trying to find the director and the other guy and of course the werewolf attacks and kills the other girl and ultimately makes his like presence known i wonder where slash and dirk are probably scouting locations for tonight's shoot well where did that jack fella run off to he probably walked home i'm gonna go over some lines all right but i don't have any well then you can help me Pitchy. Ah! Well, maybe they can 
redub it in post. Yeah. What the? Oh, it's just Tiffany rehearsing. I have to give it to her. She's got range. To be or not to be, that is the question. Tis nobler to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Oh, that's some acting. Just the sounds of the forest. But if this was a real horror film, this would be the part where the monster sneaks up on the two unsuspecting, half-naked women in the woods. So, yeah, you've got them wondering where everybody is, and then there's the scene with the other girl as she's practicing her screams for when she's going to be the scream queen in the movie, and she's going to fucking die. And then, of course, like cliche, here comes the werewolf, and the werewolf attacks and kills her. The only thing that's kind of cool about the scene that they have in the whole situation is when they're like, she's doing the monologue, and she's like practicing her lines and stuff out there. And it is funny when he's like, you know, let's practice our lines together. And he's like, but I don't have any. And she's like, that's okay. I'll just do mine. And, you know, and then he's like monologuing in the bathroom with Shakespeare or some bullshit that's there. To be or not to be? That is the question. Blah. I'm going to be a Romeo and Juliet vampire. Yes. Blah. 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 How do you say that more English-like? Blah, mate. Blah. No, that might be Australian. I don't know. Blah. I'm going to be the best actor there ever was. But yeah, it's that. Again, it's just kind of that weird stereotype. But here, here we go. And, you know, then you have her doing the monologue. And then, of course, good old Wolfie Boy over here, Jack. You know, again, if you haven't gotten it now, he's a werewolf. His name is Jack. Wolfman Jack, I'm assuming, is the, you know, correlation with the whole thing. But he doesn't, like, have his own cool fucking radio show or anything like that. And then when she pulls him into the bathroom, you know, he's like, oh, nothing's going on out there. And then he opens the door and he sees Jack eating the other girl. So they're trying to figure out how they're going to get out there. And, you know, the werewolves after them. And they suddenly hear something go off. And there's something so ridiculous about this scene. I'm not going to explain it. You're just going to have to figure it out for yourself. What's wrong? There's a monster after us. It's going to kill us. We need to get out of here. Boy, is this a prank? Do I look like I'm joking? We need to get the hell out of here. Where are the others? If they were still alive, we'd know by now. It's just you and I. But we don't know what happened to them. We can't call for help. We're not going to get out of here. So that's it? We're all going to die? I thought I was going to die in a Mexican brothel under a sweet hooker. What's that? Whose phone is that? It's not yours. I, I don't own a phone. Still no signal. Shh, listen. This is Slash. Can't come to the phone right now because I'm probably on set banging a hot starlet. Is Slash in the barn? How's he getting a signal? Perks of being the producer. So leave a message and I'll get back to you. Maybe. Slash, you idiot. It's Sterling, your executive producer. Mr. Sterling to a low life like you. You better not be screwing around. Make your days and get this low budget turd in the can. Or the next thing you'll direct will be a dog food commercial. Maybe. Why didn't he pick up? Who cares? Look, if he's in there, so are his car keys and his phone. Either way, that's our ticket out of here. Go get them. Why me? Because you're the man. Okay, come, come here. Come a little closer. Okay, just a little bit closer. Let me ask you, how in the fuck are they listening to his voicemail? Like, that is ridiculous, okay? That is silly. That is just plain fucking dumb in the situation where the movie goes. I 
I get it. They're just doing like you can have the cell phone fucking ring in the whole thing. You can have like, oh, I don't believe you. Oh, there's the thing. How do we get out of here? Oh my god, somebody actually does have a signal. Oh, that must be like it could be. Why isn't it like a funky ringtone? Why isn't it like something like, you know, even if they want to do the whole thing, I'm banging some starlight. Like, it could just be like, you know, going to have sex with your mom. Going to have sex with your mom. Like, something like ridiculous like that, that we got going out there so that it signifies that it's his cell phone. But no, we have to have this stupid fucking thing. And is it kind of funny? Kind of. I just, again... I don't give a shit about this storyline. I don't give a shit that all of a sudden the werewolf's here. It's just the fact, again, that it's in the last 40 fucking minutes of this goddamn movie that this is happening in this situation, right? With everything that's going on with the cocaine werewolf and all this bullshit that we've got going there. That it's... That they're listening to his voicemail. And you have the Sterling Entertainment Group calling him to berate him that he has to finish doing this movie. Like it's again, it's being so meta and it's talking about itself and Oh my God, you guys need to finish it. Cause I don't want to spend any more money on this movie. Just like they do to all the other people that's there, but they're not really like that. And you know, ha ha. It's funny. I'm a dick, but I'm not really a dick. Get it. Ha ha ha. Like, come on dudes. Like you, can, I just feel like it's, they try to be subtle, but then some things just aren't fucking subtle, and it just doesn't fucking work. Like, take that shit out of here. Give him a fucking ringtone that's stupid and ridiculous and funny and over the top that signifies it's him. Like, even if he had, like, you're the best around, no director's gonna bring you down, you're the best around showing your dick to everyone in town like some stupid shit like that like if that was what was in here then it would be just 10 times better than what they're trying to do in this little situation and still be silly stupid you would know that it was the director like i recognize that ringtone anywhere that slashes his phone must work even the little line well he's the producer so he gets perks like, that's kind of funny, and that kind of sits. It's silly, it's dumb, but it works in the tone of the movie. The other part, it just it doesn't really work for me, personally, and it's just just dumb, just really dumb. And then, you know, just like Paranormal Pat always says, that the men have to do everything, you know, and they have to put their lives on the line because that's the right thing to do, and that's the reason why she suggests that the clown goes out there. It's not just a stupid joke that they're doing playing on every man's irrational fear that every woman just, when they get in trouble, you know, has to rely on the man even though they present themselves as strong, independent women. No, no, no. It's the right thing to fucking do. Like, it's just, it's one of those things that go on. And, and me saying that, that's a running joke that we have between the two of us, which he's going to probably text message me after he hears that part if he's listening to this podcast. So... <laughs> it's uh it's it's just so ridiculous like in in that regard that they like bring her down to that level to like oh it's stereotypical a woman gets in trouble and she needs a you know she forces the man to go out there and do everything and of course that's gonna lead to to clown boy's death as he tries to go and get the cell phone and he picks up the cell phone then all of a sudden here comes you know as he's showing it to her like what am i supposed to do with these things like he doesn't have a phone he doesn't know how to deal with it and then he gets mauled to death by the cocaine werewolf and lastly we have the sheriff he's driving up he's looking along and he sees a house with lights on in the distance their you know their trailer b&b is ready to go and they need to go you know he's like why is the light on over there i should go over there and check it out and <laughs> it's it's dumb that again like I just need more with him and him actually doing things and getting involved with these people. Like, hey, isn't that where they're filming that movie? You know, they said they were experiencing weird things and something doesn't look right over there. It's time for me to go check it out. They said something about a werewolf, but I don't believe in it. So now she's locked in her room trying to figure out how she's going to get out of it. And she figures out that, you know what, the werewolf there's there's no one else is here where is everybody where's jack 
I bet you that werewolf actually is Jack. And so the, you know, Jack does show up, starts chasing her around the house again, not really chasing her more like they're kind of almost jogging in place around the house as morning is coming. Right. And then all of a sudden he stops in his tracks and (laughs) falls to the floor. And then the sheriff shows up, comes inside the house with his gun drawn and he's there to save the day. Hello. Is anybody here? Oh, thank God you found me. They're all dead. Who all's dead? All my friends. Well, who killed them? Uh, uh, What happened to me? Uh. That's him. He's the motherfucking werewolf. That's crazy. You just hold it right there, pal. (laughs) Stay back. I'm not afraid to use this. You're high on cocaine? Don't you move a muscle. Nobody needs to get hurt here. Shoot him. I don't know what's happened to me. Something bit me and I've been stuck out here for days. I just want my old life back. Will you let me help you? You Just get down on the ground there and put your hands behind your back. Not today, copper. I feel this hunger inside and it drives me to kill. Get down now. Okay, so he shoots at the werewolf, and, you know, what do you think? How do you think the werewolf dies, right? Because this is the final confrontation. Is there a giant standoff between the werewolf and the sheriff? Do they have a knockdown, drag-out fight, and, you know, they're punching each other, and he's throwing them through couches, but this isn't fucking Van Helsing. And so there's no way that he's going to die if he runs into a couch. And then maybe there's like a deer head on the wall that's there in the background. And he's going to ram it through his chest and puncture the heart. And just, you know, it's a knuckled out, dragged down fight. And it's one of the best things, even though, you know, and it's not like it's really well done. It's just like them kind of like slowly punching and slashing at each other. So it's like, you know, bad movie type of fight in the whole situation, the way that it works. And it's hilarious and everything like that. Is that the way it ends? Is that what you think that's going on? Because you'd be fucking wrong. You'd be 100% wrong. How does the cocaine werewolf die? Well, they kind of mentioned it there. And we had a conversation in the whole thing. And like, I was looking at Pat, you know, like, it'd be kind of cool being a werewolf addicted to cocaine, to be honest with you. Like, if that's what it was, if your vice was cocaine and you became a werewolf, because there's only one thing that's going to bring you down it's silver bullets. All you could, you're going to just sniff as much cocaine as you want. You get all these superpowers and you can be cracked out. So you're going to get crack powers that's there, cocaine powers, that cocaine strength. You can fucking lift buses and shit. And you're like, you're even stronger because you're a goddamn werewolf. Like, everything's great. Everything's cool. You're just going to beat the shit out of everybody. And then, you know, they do this in the movie because the werewolf has a fucking heart attack. Wait, that's not how a werewolf's going to fucking die. His heart doesn't explode. They don't show his heart fucking exploding. I'm pretty sure that that would probably kill a werewolf too. Unless it's like, you know, werewolves are like Wolverine. And just because regenerate, the heart explodes, it comes back, everything's fine. But no, he just overdoses and has heart attack because he's been doing too much cocaine. And he decided after he just had a stint as the werewolf under the, the impression of cocaine, oh, you know, and I love too that he's like, I'm not afraid to use this, and he unrolls the baggie. Like, that's fucking hilarious. Okay, that's stupid and fucking hilarious at the same time. And then he just snorts it all in, and he transforms. And she's like, what, what's going on? Oh, he must just be really, like really high, and he doesn't know what he's doing. And then he becomes the werewolf, and she's like, well, you can fucking shoot him now if you want to deal with anything with him. And so, yeah, he has a heart attack, falls over, dies. That's it. 
that that's the end of the werewolf. No, nothing climactic, nothing exciting. And so we have the sheriff there with our final girl as they look over the dead Jack on the floor and they say their final words. They drive off into the distance and then eventually the credits roll, but not before we get like <laughs> tapped for a possible sequel in this movie, you know, where the, I don't know who this is. Is it the director? Is it the lady from earlier that was with the son? Like, I'm assuming that it's the director in the way that it kind of looks. Because it's just like, all of a sudden we see, like, a man walking in the distance. And, you know, it has to be a dude. And he's wearing, like, Vans or something like that. And he comes across, like, the whole thing of cocaine. But then they reach down and they've got, like, green hands that have, like, spikes on it. And it grabs the cocaine and it just sniffs it. And it's it's wearing like a, a band across its head. And I think then it might actually be the old lady because it has gray hair. But who the fuck knows who it is? But you have Cocaine Werewolf 2, even Cocainier or Cocaine Boogaloo, whichever one you want to go with. And she like reaches her hands to the sky and there's lightning everywhere. And she, <laughs> you know, in her best like Skeletor voice. There's some roars from the wolf, and then the movie truly ends. And I left all that in with this just because I thought it was really silly. And I want you to hear some of the stuff going on leading into the end theme of Cocaine Werewolf. No one's going to believe all this, but it'll make one hell of a script. It'll be okay. And so that was Cocaine Werewolf. Again, like, and maybe I'm a little bit too harsh on the shift change and going to the whole thing, but I just feel it's, again, it's not set up well enough, right? And I really wish the sheriff was more involved. He's like just an afterthought. Like, there's a really good setup to this movie with there's a werewolf 
and he's you know he's killed a bunch of people and then he you know infects his werewolfness onto a dude that's hooked on cocaine because he's this businessman this wall street guy and his life's about cars money fast women and cocaine it's cocaine city baby Woo! you know that type of thing going on there but then it devolves into him attacking these people making a shitty horror movie making commentary on the fact that this is a shitty horror movie by a studio that's known for shitty horror movies. Like, again, I think you need to choose when and where you're doing these types of things. It's fine if, like, he gets bit by the werewolf and the werewolf's never seen again. That's fine. And if it was going, like, I was really trying to figure out what way was it going to go. Was it like, he's going to try to kill the werewolf because if he kills the werewolf, then he'll no longer be a werewolf. And he can't deal with the fact that he's a werewolf and it's going to ruin his life being this big businessman or whatever. Or, fuck it, he goes and he attends, like, all this shit, right? All his business shit. And, like, he becomes, like, the cocaine werewolf, but he's, like, the best stockbroker in the world and shit like that. Even as a werewolf and tearing off people's heads when he's not, like, you know, I just wanted to go batshit insane is really what I wanted to do. And it just never reaches that. And that's also fine, too. Right, because I know what I'm getting into with this like really low budget horror film that we've got here, and so it's but it just if you're gonna go the route that you do with this horror crew and and you know making fun of the cheap horror movies that you've done for this stuff all over this time and and the entertainment you know company that you're working with and they're okay with that shit, but introduce those characters within the first fifteen to twenty minutes of the movie right show them doing the stuff that's out there and then meeting jack and then maybe one by one they're getting picked off by him when he's like doing the cocaine and he's turning it into the werewolf and they don't realize it's him until the very end of the movie and then mix in the sheriff because like oh my god the sheriff comes in because they're reporting a murder and they think that all oh, these hollywood types they're coming out here and they're making a movie in our small community and there's all these people dying it must be them and they're telling fibs about a werewolf oh man that's just your horror movie nonsense and then have him dragged in until he sees the werewolf and saves the day like i just i feel there are a couple different ways that you have just gone with it that still would have kept the essence of what they're trying to do but make it a lot more straightforward and just kind of go crazy on some other things right and you just have some long shots that don't make sense in the terms of the movie, right? Other than to have like a kill or something like that. And you're trying to explain things and give your movie lore, but you don't follow down that path. And you just kind of become a really cheap movie towards the end of it that's making fun of cheap movies. So it just, it kind of fails on that part. Like, again, the first 30 to 40 minutes of this movie are really a so bad it's good movie. But the rest of it, just kind of isn't and there's some so bad it's good stuff and laughable things and stupid jokes and things but it's just it gets kind of boring and they're few and far between with everything that goes on there a decent soundtrack not bad acting to be honest for this type of movie i give that a pass when it's going on so if you're rating everything when it comes to this movie it's really rough because even the in the special effects department, there is not a whole lot to speak of. I mean, the costume is just, it's a really shitty rubber costume. I, you know, practical effects are great and I get it. I love it. And for this, it that makes it a so bad it's good, but it's ridiculous at the same time. And then you have just the lack of any blood. In this movie, there is blood, but it's so like weird and sparing that it's just it it doesn't work for me in the context of this movie and what they're kind of going for. So you have these bloodless scenes where it's just stock footage blood going on the, the, the screen and then you've got like marks of blood on the face and that's fucking it. And that's you've got one great kill, which is the first kill of the movie. And then after that. There's nothing else. So the gore in this movie, it's a one out of five because it, even that's not super gory. Like it could bring it to a two, but it's a definite one. This movie's not gory at all. And I wish they had leaned into a couple of things. Like they show a body part here or there, 
But like even just a simple like tearing off of an arm using a mannequin arm and just showing a little bit of blood, like that would have been kind of cool to do something like and even have the wolf like he's strung out of cocaine, rips off the arm and starts beating the guy to death with his own arm. It's simple. It's funny. It's ridiculous. And it can look really cheesy and bad and it still be fun in the movie. Like there's a difference between somebody like a trauma or if I have to go to the production company, which again, it it escapes my, I think it's like fluff in the light. I can't remember exactly what the company is called, but the crew that's doing the Terrifier movies and just did stream and is doing a bunch of other movies similar to that, like that company's line of movies where they aren't high budget. Trauma is not high budget, but it does spend some time and creativity in doing some of the gore stuff. This just doesn't cut it. And really, you know, they must be way lower budget than even those two companies combined, or that this is being done for none, or this literally is somebody just taking a handheld camera and making movies like they did back in the day in the 80s when you had these great video underground movies that were passed along from VHS to VHS, like they were some fan dub anime back in the 80s and 90s, right? I just... I, I, there has to be a little more love when it comes to that in, in this regard. And if you want to be so campy, the, the crap factor, it's a solid five out of five. This, this is just, it's low budget. It's silly. It's got, it's so bad. It's good. The fun factor. I wish this was higher on this movie. I wish it was, I was hoping it was going to be. It's a three out of five. I was hoping for a four out of five or a five out of five to put it in that cherished, it's so bad, it's good category. And while it does have its moments, it doesn't reach those heights for me of so bad, it's good horror. So unfortunately, when we go to the final rating for this movie, and I really want it to be more, it's a solid, It I would give it, I think I rated it originally too high and i'm knocking it a point after going through it again and it's a solid two out of five manson at home right it's it just misses the mark of of really hitting it and i really thought when i first watched it the first 40 minutes gave it that three out of five and while while things are still fun there but that last 40 minutes of this movie i just i it's not interesting and it was even rough going back through to get the audio and being interested in wanting to get the right things. And there's so much more stuff that I was going to put into this, but I'm like, it's all the same thing. Everything that they're doing, it's basically the same scene over again, talking about how they don't have the money to do this stuff, how ridiculous that they don't have the money to do this stuff. That This is just a low budget horror movie. Hey, we're in a low budget horror movie. I don't have the money to do these things. Oh, this is so bad. Why aren't I in a better movie? Like, it's that over and over and over again, and it's just tiresome. And that's what really knocks it that extra point for me. So I was really looking forward to this. It's got a great cover. It's got a great theme song to this thing. And it had a really fun trailer. But it just didn't live up to what I expected it to be. And so that's why my rating is there. So that is it for this, which happens to also be the birthday episode, which it it will be my birthday soon, so I'm really enjoying doing this. And we're one episode away from the end of the season, I believe. Maybe one, maybe two, with everything that's going on. Because when this is going to be released, it is uh, the last day of August. And then for September, we have got, uh, yep, two days in September. So we've got the last episode of this quote-unquote season. So this is the end of season nine. This is... Officially jumping into its 10th season, which will be the 11th year that I'm doing this podcast, right? Because the first season wrapped up on the first year. And I've been looking at everything that's gone through this. Like, it's it's weird. It's surreal that th- things are going on. So we'll have our, our mini episode for the next episode where I promise to do what I promise to do for the mini episode. We're going to get that list together and we'll talk about it. And we'll talk about the movie that's going to be at the end. And as everybody knows, the last episode of the season also gets 
the blooper reel. So you'll have that to look forward to at the end of the episode. So maybe I try to choose a shorter movie because I managed to make this episode only two and a half hours long, which is uh, quite a bit longer than the movie itself. But hey, I, I enjoy it. And, when, and I don't have a whole lot to beat down. Uh, they turn out to be relatively short episodes for what they are. So thank you guys so much for checking out the podcast. I appreciate everybody that does. And if you guys haven't noticed, uh, for those that are want to listen to it that way, I've begun actually uh, uploading some of the episodes up on YouTube. So in YouTube, since Google's taking away Google Podcasts that are out there, YouTube is now going to be the platform that podcasts are going to live for Google. So, but I'm still trying to figure out how to categorize them as podcasts and not, there's no video that goes along with it. It's all audio. So you're just going to have to deal with that fact. And I appreciate those that have checked it out. And if you guys are still coming back and listening to it, I really appreciate you guys as well. And I know that somebody did leave a comment on one of them for the imaginary where he says, I think I overheard something differently in the way that they did it because, uh, and it was the scene where she was like, Oh, you, and you're a girl. They, they said that possibly she said that she's a grown up, and I wanted to address it here on the podcast rather than doing that. If I did. Okay. I did. I still stand by part of my statement on the whole thing. But it really kind of sounded that way, so yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I apologize. Again, it's just a joke that I'm going through. I don't believe in that type of stuff that's going on there, but hey, that's what it is. I'm not trying to be that guy, you know, and grift over to that side. So uh, with everything else being said, if you want to check everything out, you can go to Terrible Terror Podcast on YouTube. Go out there, check out the reviews. There's a review for Alien Romulus and Stream as well. And there probably will be an episode on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, when that movie is released. Because I'm looking forward to seeing that movie as well. And for the other platforms, TikTok, Terrible Terror Podcast. Uh, also available on Instagram, Terrible Terror Podcast. Facebook.com slash Terrible Terror Podcast. And as always, I am on Twitch.tv slash Terrible Terrors where there's video games, there's chats, there's all sorts of different things that are up there, which I'm also figuring out how to simul stream on YouTube. So go check it out. Thank you guys for listening and take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you soon. Okay, if I've had to have this fucking song stuck in my head since I saw the trailer two months ago, you guys are going to have to have this song stuck in your head as well. Enjoy!